Okay, let's get started with a short introduction to Drake and how to test your control design using Drake, using Python. Okay, that's a big jump from MATLAB. Hopefully, you can bear with me. And after practice, I think uh, all of us will get used to this uh, basic uh, concept. All right. Uh, before jump into the example, I think I have to cover some background about Drake and uh, especially how to do simulation in Drake. First of all, I would like to tell you, okay, <laughs> I would like to ask you, what is a simulation? Giving the control. So simulation has to relate to control. And the uh, system model. Given the system model. OK. And the simulator, the simulation, as opposed to real world execution, is something running in parallel with real world. Right? You're trying to duplicate the real world prediction. Right, of the future of the physics. There's so many things can be simulated, not only robotic system, not only control systems. Every physical process can be simulated as long as you understand the law behind the physical process. So if you are not in a robotics engineer major, you may in the electrical or electronics. You can simulate circuits. Did you learn how to simulate circuits? to simulate circuit. If you jump a little bit further into the physical side, you can simulate the EM, right, electromagnetic fields, the heat of the circuit to test your chip design. That's possible. So what's the simulation there? Solving Maxwell equation, Maxwell equations. That's it. Whatever laws governs that particular physical process, you solve or <laughs> you just replicate that law and uh, show the result of the, how, use that law to predict how the system will behave, then that's called simulation. Okay, you can also simulate aircraft, right? Then you need some kind of uh, aerodynamics solution or solver. If you're from mechanics, okay, you can fluid. That's also simulation. You can simulate how the things evolve underwater or in the air. All of these are called simulations. So roughly speaking, I think there's no word can describe what simulation means. But for me, it's just uh, somehow real world physics are often described by functions, all the differential equations and the partial differential equations. These are all systems. Okay, I, I hope you can tell this the difference now. So this is a description of static system. And those are dynamic, that what we focus mainly on dynamic system, that's non-trivial, okay? So static system is also mapping, a, 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 a describing the physics. Okay, I'll give you examples uh, later on, okay? So all simulators essentially are trying to do what? It's trying to solve these equations. They're all of these subsystems, they connect to each other, they interact with each other, and uh, you want to know how the interaction will play out into the future. So if you want to remember one sentence from me, I think all the simulations are trying to solve equations or differential equations. Okay? So in order to do this, you need three things. Okay, you should tell me what the, discrete, uh, the, the differential equation is before you can solve it, right? So you need to construct the differential equations or the system models. Uh, what, what do I mean by models is the functions. Okay. Uh, let me just give you a few examples. Suppose, uh, I think now you can understand. So this robot, let's say we have a robot like this. This robot's moving around here. Then you have a, you can use x dot, those kind of differential equations to describe its motion. Okay, you can simulate where it will be. Okay, so that's kind of uh, the dynamic model. That's ODE, 
or PDE, but we don't deal with PDE that much. All right, that's hard to simulate, by the way. Okay, and it is also static relations, static models. For example, sensor models are typically static. For example, you have a IMU sensor. You know what IMU is, right? Xiaohan, you played with it before? You used it before? Okay, what do you think? Mathematically, what is IMU model? Well, what is IMU sensor? Because you have a chip on your hand. The computer doesn't know, all right? The way you tell the computer is right. The physics is not how it looks. The physics of the sensor to the system. IMU sensor, this is a measurement, right? The measurement, let's call the measure, could be x, y, uh, though. So the acceleration, right? So ax, ay, az, that's acceleration on three axes, okay? And uh, uh, alpha dot, beta dot, gamma dot, raw piece row, if you like, right? That's the velocity. And those are the measurement. They will give you, let's say, uh, depending on the chip you buy, it may, may return different, but essentially they tell you these six information, right? This six information depends on what? Depends on the true value of those things, okay? So if you call this, this will be a function of the system state, if you like, right? If you have a system moving, right, in the engine, you know you can calculate this. I, I suppose you can calculate its uh, velocity accelerations. It will be the true velocity plus some noise. Okay? Are you with me? So whatever the state you represent the system, the function of the state will be some sensor. Okay, it's similar to what we had before. The measurement is a static function of state and the input. All right? So this is a static relation. You can also, uh, nowadays you use uh, maybe the, uh, even the depth sensor, right? LiDAR, right? It's just, you can simulate that. And there's a package that you can simulate realistically the LiDAR measurement. It's nothing but how far away from, I mean, you need to simulate the physics, right? How the, the laser point will come back the distance it's distance related measurement. You can add some noise to simulate that. Okay, so that's also a function of state. So where you are in the environment and how the environment is constructed. Okay, so you need to construct those models, not only uh, the dynamic models, how it evolves as a differential equation, but also static models that include uh, the relation, let's, let me give you more examples. Uh, static model could be static. Also, sensors, Some, most of them, okay, it's not all. And uh, the environment. Okay, you can think about that as a static thing, that at this position, there's a wall, okay? So you just use some geometry to describe it, right? And uh, you could also say, I would say kinematic, it can also be that way. Kinematic, if you have learned robotics, kinematic means F equal to forward kinematics of theta. So for example, this guy, this is a robotic arm. I'm not sure whether you can see my circle or not. This is robotic arm. Where the any factor is, where the any factor, here is the any factor, okay? Uh, where the any factor is depends on all these joint variables and also the base location, right? Those geometric information has nothing to do with the force or accelerations. Uh, they are basically for kinematics. If you tell me what the theta is, I already tell you where the any factor is. Anti-factor, where the anti-factor is. So that's also a kind of a static relation, all right? You can use that. You can, I can control the theta and to move the anti-factor to different positions, 
Okay, so my simulation knows, okay, now these are my theta. Now I need to display like this. All right, so <clears throat> looks complicated, but actually not. It's just, I have a feeling is that, let me say that loud. I think human, including you and me, okay, are incapable of doing anything complex. <laughs> you, you can disagree with me. I think we cannot do anything complex. Okay, we can only build simple things together. So modular design, we can only put simple things together. I, I don't think you can just from scratch immediately design an aircraft, but you can design this chip, that chip, this chip has certain functionality, that chip has certain functionality, that actuator, this wing, you put them together in certain way, they will perform complex behavior. But all, if you look into individual components, they are all simple. Okay, so that's how I feel. So all of these components, they look complicated, but if you look into each of them, they're just simple ones. Okay, they're simple robots, they're simple dynamic systems, and then you put them together, that's become complex, okay. Uh, I don't think you need to construct this class typically, uh, typical simulators will allow you to construct this environment or, and the URDF, right? Using URDF file or uh, S, SDF, right? Huh? Uh, but, but there's a different, okay, any, all of them are in XML file, right? And uh, you can specify the model information and how it looks. Uh, in the environment using different. What are these things are doing? This gives you a, I would say, an interface between the model that, that eventually, okay, the, the simulator will construct differential equations like what we learned, okay? But you don't want to derive the differential equations of this formula directly. Okay, These or those files tells you or give you an interface for which you can specify things in the way you like, like a GUI. You specify how it looks, how this robot behave, and then the, the system automatically convert that into a uh, simulator model, which is differential equations. Okay, so some people still derive physics model. I don't think that's needed. As long as you have a URDF file, you have a complete dynamic system model, almost, all the time. If you have the inertia uh, already specified, there's nothing you need to worry about, okay. Uh, solving differential equations, once you construct them, you need to solve it. So that's really kind of a, a solver, okay. That's the key, actually. Determine, distinguish different uh, simulators. The solver is the key, how to solve the construct uh, differential equation. And uh, that's also referred to sometimes the physics engine. Wuli Yinqing. Okay, that makes sense. Engine, how to say engine? E N G N. Okay, all the simulators should have a physics engine. Some are good, some are bad. Okay, uh, <clears throat> once you solve it, you need to see it. We like to see how it works. MATLAB is the worst, oh no, sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> MATLAB plain vanilla version of uh, visualization. You can plot, okay? That's also one way to s visualize. Oh, that robot, this is X position, that's Y position, I plot it over time. Okay, I can picture how it looks in the environment. Okay, that's MATLAB. The plot is one way to visualize your simulation result. You should think that way, okay? Fundamental, they are the same. And this fancy stuff is also a way to visualize the result. There's nothing more in this beyond what MATLAB cannot do. All right, it just looks good. All right, so visualization often make your simulator more attractive, but it's not fundamentally important. It's important for, it's not that important for domain expert like you. 
it's important for some people who doesn't know what's going on and have visualization, give them an intuitive view of how the system evolved. Are you with me? Okay, so all the, all the simulators are doing this. So people, when they select simulators, they will select, most of them will look for ones give you fancy visualizations. Okay, you may think some, oh, that looks good. That simulator looks so cool, so good. But you may not realize that simulator may give you everything is wrong. It's just virtually right, okay? Visually correct, visually appealing, but it's physically it's incorrect. That's all very possible, okay? So all the games, you, you play games, right? I don't. You play games, right? It looks, games, the most important thing is not how the physics is realistic or how realistic the physics engine is. It's really how it looks. And roughly physical is fine. Okay, so, so game engine is typically not professional. I shouldn't say that, but anyway, so it's, as compared to more professional uh, robotic simulators, those game engine typically doesn't require very, very accurate simulations. Y you may have heard of many simulator, uh, sorry, physics engines, right? Bullet. And uh, so we will, we, will, we will see a few simulators. So popular simulator in robotics, there's a other circuits or aer aerodynamic simulator. I don't want to mention those things. But the things that we, we care about, that's the most popular simulators. That's Majoko. We use, my, my lab use quite a bit Majoko almost every day. Majoko is, is a good trade off between uh, uh, accuracy and, uh, and the speed. Because simulation also important is that you solve this thing, solver. They want to accurate, but also want fast. Some simula simulator is really, really slow, okay? And uh, uh, Pi Bullet, it's, uh, it's, it's a Python wrapper of a bullet. Bullet is, is open source, I think it's open source. Okay, you can download it, you can see how, it, how, it, how, it, how they write the code. And most of you may have used Gazebo, right? If you, uh, did you take the robotic operating system class? Okay, you use ROS, right? And uh, they may teach you how to do a little bit about the Gazebo, right? And Gazebo has support for many, this is, I mean, this is a pl simulation platform. You can use different en simulation engines. You can use Bullet here, I think, right? You can also use other simulators. Uh, so, but this guy, typically based on my experience, if you want to simulate leg robots, those wheel robot is, 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 is not hard, okay? So leg robot is, has a lot of contact. So these are really hard to simulate accurately. That's really one of the key to distinguish different robotic simulators. Some of them are good at computing the right contact, some are not, okay? Gazebo, I, at least the version latest uh, up to last year, I don't think. Sometimes, if you see a robot walking, uh, especially have this kind of surface contact, or if you use a uh, robot hand to grab, simulate the grasping of a, a cup, the cup may, may, may jump, all right? <coughs> it looks good, but they jump like a magic. So the diverse, okay, the, the solution diverges, the way they configure this. And the VRAP also has some issues with those content modeling, but it's a little bit better. Uh, we bought, I think some of you use it. Uh, this has become open source. Majoko just become open source as well, right? Last month or so. Uh, not open source, they were bought out. They, were, they said they would be free at least. <laughs> okay? ASX is an NVIDIA uh, simulator that's pretty cool. And uh, in, in among all of these, I think this guy is pretty accurate and really fast. That's why this is a deep mind and open AI gene, open AI, that those are really kind of top uh, AI companies. They adopt these simulators. If you read any papers on reinforcement learning, most of them are using Majoko. Most. None of them use Gazebo. None. Uh, of course, depending on who wrote the paper, but most of them, I will say, because this is really slow. 
and inaccurate. So, but it looks good. You may play with it, you may feel good. I can do this, but this is really magic. It's not real physics. When you, when you do the real experiment, something will happen, all right? So, um, <coughs> let me see. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Uh, this is a gazebo. I think uh, a lot of them are simultaneous falling down and uh, those simulations. I think you can play with it. I mean, you can download from website. And uh, I think it's pretty accurate. Humanoid. It looks also good, but the, the only drawback is that it doesn't have much of a, a sensor, like a camera sensor in the data, or a depth sensor, LiDAR. It's a little bit hard to integrate those sensors into the simulator. That's the only drawback, I think, for now. Okay, so a lot of simulators can do this, but this is really fast. That's making the reinforcement learning very, uh, learning with it is very useful. Okay, you can, we can watch this for the entire class, but let's stop. Okay, uh, recently I, ha I haven't got the chance to know too much about it, but, but I think uh, NVIDIA is also pretty good. It's pretty realistic. Those are really in the simulator. It's not really in the real world. It's hard to distinguish. They are really good at uh, rendering and visualization stuff. Uh, if you ask me, uh, that's my personal, okay? They use Physics X engine, and that, that engine is keep evolving over time. The previous version is not as accurate, okay? Nowadays, I didn't test. So I think it's getting better, okay? So it looks almost real. Sometimes it's hard for you to distinguish what's real, but they can integrate a lot of vision data and as if you are so in the real world. So the seem to real transition will be a little bit much easier. Okay. Um, this bounding box, you can see some visual data. That's the, uh, how, you, how, the, how the camera's view maybe, or depth sensor view of the environment, okay? Let's go back to our word thing, okay? So why, I mean, if you learn any control class, no control class use any of these simulators, okay? It's a little bit hard. It take too much extra time to set it up and uh, testing simple ideas is, is, is not worth the time. Most popular simulators for control system, like uh, maybe lab view is, I wouldn't call it a simulator, but it's really doing experiment. Uh, Simulink and the MATLAB, Simscape, they can also do pretty cool stuff nowadays, right? You can somehow incorporate URDF into uh, the uh, MATLAB Simscape. That's integrated into Simulink. You can use this block diagram thing that we are used to, to really kind of uh, simulate the behavior of the system. And you can simulate electrical, multi-body fluids even. Pretty cool. Okay, the reason is we don't use MATLAB is not because it, it doesn't work. It's really, it's, first of all, it's a little bit slow and it costs money and also it's not open source. I hope uh, in the future everything will be open source. I think so, okay? And that, that I didn't mention Drick so far, okay? Drick is first of all developed by uh, like the Russ Tedrick. Uh, Tedrick is a professor at MIT and their group uh, now is affiliated with uh, TRI. Toyota Research Institute. I think they're a top group in the world about robotics. Uh, <clears throat> Drake is more accurate. It's serious simulators. Okay? It's not professional. It's, it's more accurate even than Majoko. But maybe some people don't like my statement, but that's how I feel it. It's a little bit slower than Majoko, but you can configure it to make it faster if you don't want that accurate. So it's very accurate. It's a serious professional type of <laughs> simulator. Okay, it's open source. And the thing that support, I think that's a, uh, uh, another thing is that uh, Drake is the only simulator so far. 
that adopts block diagram. Block diagram, block diagram concept into the design. As I mentioned, humans are incapable of doing anything complex. If I ask you to design a code, do a lot of things, I don't know, I mean, you, you, you may suffer. You may run a big CPP file. You may define your internal kind of uh, class functions. Uh, you can organize it. But Drake support exactly the input-output connection type of block diagram thing. You can just work on this block. Tell me what your LQR controller is. And I can connect to the uh, plant then I close the loop, I will see it, all right? So that's a really important feature. You use Drake, it's just almost like you're using MATLAB Simulink from command line. Simulink can be configured from command line, do you know that? You don't have to use a graphical interface. You can use a script to place this block here and input connection, that, that, that thing can be do uh, from command line. I have done that before. Drake is just like that. Okay, but use Python or uh, I think also C++. C++. If you eventually use it in uh, related to experiment, I think C++ version is, is pretty good. All right, and it's also great support for dynamics modeling. It's very accurate and it has built-in optimization package. It's really high, when they design the simulator, they, they really have control design for robotic system in mind. Okay, they have a kinematics dynamics packages so, or I mean two uh, classes, the functionalities, I would say, so that you can directly compute all the Jacobians, whatever, mass matrices, those four torques directly by calling a few functions. And it's very accurate, especially the contact handling part is has different options. And the, the only thing that I think, visualization is not great, that's, it's superficial, right, as I, as I mentioned. But it's not that great, but it's acceptable. Okay, you can see it's not like a MATLAB type of uh, plot type of simulation, but you can simulate. Uh, and the more important is open source and support Python. Okay, that's why we're going to use it. Uh, <clears throat> because that's the only substitute for MATLAB Simulink I can find. Okay, so before I dive into, I think I can give you a <clears throat> quick block overview. Some, you're familiar with like this kind of block diagram, right? I have, suppose I have three system, it's like this. And uh, I want to simulate this system. So this is system one, system two, system three. Uh, for example, I will say example, this could be my uh, input source. That could be a sinusoidal function or step function, or step function, like this, right? That's my input. When I turn it on, they will give me a step trigger. And uh, this could be my control. This could be my controller. This could be my plant. Okay. Some of them may be static. Some of them may be dynamic. Okay. And uh, then I plug in, this is the, my measurement. And this is my control input. And when I took my measurement, this may be my reference and the system is trying to track that. So, so, so those things, I'll just give you an example. This is possible, right? You can use these block diagrams. You can build really, really fancy or complicated system, okay? Now, the first question, so the way I introduce simulating, simulation is not telling you uh, how to do it, but telling you, you need to think as if you are the designer of the simulate, simulator, what you should do what information you need so that you, whenever you run into some questions, your common sense will tell you how this may be solved. So you can look for information that are uh, <coughs> more quickly, okay? How to define a system block? Suppose that my block is like this. Suppose I have a U1, U2. I have output port Y, okay? So <clears throat> that's a static. Suppose I have a static case. Can you tell me what information you need to tell the computer in order to describe this block? Let's just use common sense. You need to tell the system. 
tile system. That what you need. Uh, maybe how many input number of input ports? Right, number of output ports. <coughs> 有几个输入口，有几个输出口，你得告诉我，对吧？再一个呢，这个输出是怎么由输入决定的？就完事了，是吧 ？Local static, right? Uh, then you need to tell them the relation. Which is y equal to f of u1. Let's say in this case u1, u2, right? You need to tell them the function. What is this function? How the u1, u2 will be used to compute your output? That means you. We just need to define a way to tell the system this information. They can then they have all the information they need to run their simulations. Okay, for dynamic. How should we do it? Uh, yeah, let's say we still need those things, right? We still need to tell them how many input ports, how many output ports. That's that's also needed. Okay, and then I need to tell them instead of the static relation, this part becomes what? This part becomes let's say for continuous. We need to tell them x dot equal to f x u, right? This function vector field. It's called a vector field, right? You need to tell them this vector field. So at any state, current state, at any input, if you tell me the input vector, I should tell you the velocity of that state evolving currently. <laughs> then you know infinitesimally where you should move and how fast you should move, right? And not only that, if you have a discrete, then we need to tell them the next, right? Still, I use the same kind of function. This is state update, right? This is next. Next, basically, direct tell me what the next step the state should be. So that's the update equation, update model. That's it. That's common sense, all right? Um, we will see how they have, well, you can define your syntax, right? You should tell the system this is information, and the system may look for certain ways, they may fix a way for you to enter those information, okay? Update model, okay? This is the model. The second part is that if we know how to define each individual system, then I need to connect them, right? So, uh, so I can have a system, I have a system, then maybe I have a tool, uh, this guy may com connect to this, it could be some kind of diagram, right? So, <clears throat> so basically those diagram, basically fundamentally is telling you which output port connect to which input port. Okay. Just said, just connect which output of which subsystem to which input port. Tell them uh, if they have dimensionality compa compatibility, then the diagram is drawn. You just need to use a com command connect. Connect this port with that port, that's it, right? And then i uh, just use one more uh, minute to finish this part. Then we need uh, to, uh, how do you simulate? We need to tell the simulator that this block diagram, right? We need to know, we need to know this, first of all, the diagram that we just connect and build the system, of course. The diagram includes the system and how they connect, okay? And then we also, to simulate any dynamic system or any other system, when you tell the system some parameters and also the state, initial state, okay? That's called the initial state, I see. Initial state, because if you want to solve any differential equation, you need the initial state. Okay, you need to tell them. And uh, at any given time, in order for a system to evolve into the future, you also need to tell them, keep track of the system state as well. So all of this 
information are captured by the so-called context <coughs> class. Okay, in Drake, there's a so-called context. Context is everything you need to know to involve the system into the future. That includes states, including some parameters, includes currently what's the input and output of each block. All these things are recorded or kind of uh, stored in the context. And that context something is, the uh, trick will use it in the back end to, to, to do the simulations, okay? Then the next, uh, we'll, we'll take a break and we'll start with some examples. Okay, let's, uh, let's get started. If you use a deep note or colab, okay, you can, you can directly copy uh, Rastagix class. They have a lot of example codes. One of the introductory like, uh, example code for manipulation class, I just want to show you how, how the simulator looks. And uh, this is used MathCAD, which is not as fancy as other things. Trick has its own kind of a visualization tool, um, but it's a little bit harder to run, to configure. Uh, <clears throat> for example, I'm running code now, okay, directly from this part. It's uh, these few lines of code, and uh, I can typically say, I can move it. I can remote teleoperate. Okay, I move it, they will move depending on how fast your, your, your internet is, okay? Uh, pitch, you can control. They will send the command as if they're, this is the real kind of robot. It looks real as well. Okay, you can visualize. This, this is basically kinematic visualization, but, but in the, I think in the simulator, they really have the controller running, okay? So, <clears throat> So that's how it looks, and you can construct very complicated environment, as you can imagine. Uh, but a few lines can do this. If you have the URDI file, I think that's, uh, that's possible, all right? And what Drake is really powerful of is not do this kind of thing. This is, I mean, all the simulator can do. It's really give you a block diagram view of how to construct, design your controllers and uh, sensor configurations. So that's very important, okay? Let's see how it works. Hopefully, it can move faster now. Okay, <clears throat> as I mentioned, given this diagram, there's three things you need to know. I don't teach you tricks. I don't teach you skills. That thing you can learn, okay? You can watch whatever uh, Wikipedia, you can watch or read the manual. I teach you the concept, why people do this, why they design this. So you can think as if you are the people writing the software so that's the best way for you to get started really quick, all right? So three things you need to keep in mind. One is what is, I mean, how to define an individual system block. As I mentioned, the system is nothing but static or dynamic relation, okay? We should know that, and we somehow guess we need those information, but Drake, you just need to know how Drake accepts those information from you, right? You need to know what's the syntax, what's the grammar Drake use to take in those information that you need. Once you specify individual system, you need to connect them. That's easy, right? Connect with port, with port, that's fine. And then you do simulation. You start simulators, and uh, you set up initial state, then you run. Okay, that's it. Now let's see how to define a system, the individual block. Let's not worry about how they connect, Individual block is captured by input and output. Some block may have no input, only output, that's fine, right? If there's no input, no output, that block is useless, right? <laughs> you can separate from your system. It has to have at least the one input or output so that they can interact with the rest of the blocks. Uh, <clears throat> one thing, long story short, they have a kind of a, a template class, which is called a lift system. Uh, well, the, the class, uh, the, the inherits, okay? So lift system inherits from system. So there's a system class, and system has 
typical special system, why it's called lift system, this system we can use to define any kind of a dynamic or static relation. All right? It's just this kind of block, just use lift system. You, can, you know the, roughly the grammar of Python to define a class that it has inherited from uh, the lift system. Okay, so you need to uh, init, okay, initialize the class, and you can input your own parameters and the self, and in this case, you can call the, the, the parent class, the initialization, and then you can define your own kind of a customized initialization. And uh, here is a static system. You only need what? You already tell me already. Okay, number of input, number of output, and the relation, right? Three things. How do we specify them? You need to tell them, okay, how many input port I have. So declare vector input port. I have two, actually. One is U1, the other is U2. Uh, let me write it here. So it, I think this block, the way I construct it, where is it? It looks like I have U1. I have U2, okay? And the output, I have also one output port is Y. Okay, so each port can accept a vector. So this could be, could be one, two, anything. So the port can be a vector port, so that is a two-dimensional vector as an input, all right? But you want to separate them into different meanings. This is maybe, I am you, okay? David gave you six, right? The other one may be, I don't know, so uh, GPS measurement coming in, right? So the block can take in different input and each of them could have different number of dimensions, okay? And output is the same thing, you need to define the output. I can have two output, but I didn't do it here, right? So those. If this is MU, you can ma name it as MU, that's fine. All right, it's the name you gave this port so that you can search within the system where this port, what, what's the, um, uh, what's the, you can search the port from, by their names, okay? So here you just need to declare them and then for each of declare vector output port, declare one port, you need to tell them, okay, this port, the relation, how the output relate to the state and the input. Here there's no state because it's static, all right? So it's, how, this is called self dot calculate output y. That's a name, um, you can change this, okay? This can be, I would say customized. Customized. You可以根据你的喜好,你可以叫它不同的东西, all right? You can call it self dot uh, my y, or self dot for fun, okay? But you need to define this function later in this uh, class. So this name need to match this name, all right? So whenever they see this, they whenever they, in the simulation, simulation, whenever they need the value from y, they will call this function. If you don't define it, they will report an error. Okay, in this function, what we do is that, okay, so here you can see that, uh, first of all, I need to read the current value of my input. Is that clear? So that's the function you need. So get self, self is this, this system, okay? Self is just this system. System dot get input port zero. Zero is the first one, is whichever you define the first, okay? And, uh, dot evaluate context. Because all the information you need to, to keep track of every simulation at any time is context. Okay, this context is something that you don't need to define, the system will keep track of it, all right? So whenever they call this function, they by default, they have this kind of structure. The, 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 the context is always passed into the calling of the function. And the U2 is also get input port one, which is U2, and evaluate that uh, pass through this context. Context is just this argument, right? Then you define whatever your relation is, okay? For example, I can say sign, suppose it's scalar, 
cosine u2. It's fine, right? But I can, whatever you can, you can design anything. Or, uh, or I can say uh, my output is the following. My output is u1 and u2 put together. That's, if y is like this, this becomes a mux. Okay? So you combine two vectors to a bigger vector that's called a mux. There are also d mux. If you use Simulink, you know those terms. I think uh, Drake also even have those things uh, built in blocks. You can define your individual pieces. You can, you can build your own kind of uh, library. And you can keep using them again and again. All right? That's the define of a uh, uh, static system, just to get you started. And also, one thing uh, maybe confuse beginners is there have some terminology. I think those terms make sense, but there's one thing like a base, basic vector. Because Drake was uh, written in, in C++, right? And they define their vector, their own kind of vector structure called basic vector, okay? It's, but then now we can use Python, then uh, I think you can declare a basic vector three, that means a three dimensional vector without any value yet. Or the value is uh, n a n, I think, something like that. And you can say a dot set from vector. You can give a NumPy array. They will give you a vector that Drake takes. Uh, I have a question. Sure. What, what is the uh, type of the uh, practices of the parameter u1 and u3 Uh, I didn't check. I think it's a basic vector or, uh, but here you can just use a Python grammar. So okay. Sometimes you call the, I'm not the expert on how, I didn't read this, all the source code based on how I, uh, how I use them. Sometimes when you call the Drake built-in function, okay, you may need, they don't take NumPy. Maybe you have to give them basic vector structure. They know how to do it. Uh, otherwise, I think I think uh, oftentimes you can think about if they are not NumPy, they have to be basic vector. That's the vector. That's like a NumPy array for Drake. Okay, and uh, I think as long as you know these three things for basic vector class, that's fine. Those syntax are in Python. All right. So sometimes the return is a basic vector. If you want to get the value, you need to copy to vector that from basic vector to numpy array, okay? Or from numpy array to basic vector. Okay, that's, uh, once you practice in more examples, I think those become clear. But of course, there's some kind of thing, because Drake doesn't have a tutorial that is uh, well documented and uh, very limited. Uh, 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 yeah, the community is also small, so, so I think we are among the few to first use them. Okay, Drake, how to define a continuous time dynamical system? Before it was uh, static, right? Now it's continuous time. Um, I think you already designed it for me. Continuous time, you need to declare input, declare output, also tell them the vector field, all right? Also the output relation as well, right? So, so let's say continuous time. Let's say what we have is just based on what we learned, state space model, continuous time would be like this, right? That's our general nonlinear continuous time model. How do you tell the computer about this information? Uh, this parameter you don't have to pass, and you, if you have additional parameter, you can pass to it, okay? You first uh, inherit from left system, you define, and then you do the initialization. In the initialization, you need to tell them number of input port, number of output port. In the output port, you also need to tell them, okay, how do I compute this, okay? This part, now, this calculate output, this part, this is almost like my y equal to h of x u. You need to tell them what is y, how does y depend on x and u. Right, that's simple. The only missing information is what? Is the state. You need to tell them what's the dimension of the state. What's the dimension of state? Here. 
So declare continuous state. There's a continuous state. Uh, you can specify maybe four or five, whatever. How many state you have. And the input we already know, output. Not only after declaring this, at any time instant of simulation, they need to look for vector field. They need to look for this function, the derivative of the state, right? So then you have to implement one of the class. The, the name cannot be changed here, okay? This is built in. You have to implement this. Do calculate time derivatives. I think by watching the, 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 the the title, you, the name, you know the meaning, right? It's just vector field, okay? This is just specifying x dot equal to fx u. Just specifying this, okay? As you can see, uh, of course, the self is the class. This system, context, you always need context to compute anything. Context is at any time instant, not only time zero, at any time one, time two, time three, time 100.1, all these times, you need to tell the system what are the input of this block, what's the output of that block, and so that they can compute the current state and uh, derivatives of everything. So, <clears throat> and also there's one thing is this is just x dot. Okay, it's, you can define, you can give different names, but the third argument has to be x dot that you will return. You tell the system, okay, Currently, the velocity is one. So move along the positive direction at the unit speed. That's the meaning, all right? So x, so I can get current x. In order to do this, x, y, right, x, u. So you need to x to get the current state. It's called context, get continuous state vector. Copy to vector, so it's because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a basic vector form, right? So you have to, this return, get continuous state will give you a basic vector structure. Then you need to copy the vector. And this is self.getInput port. I think we used that before, right? It's just the, what's the value of this u. Now you have x, you have u. You can specify your vector field, okay? You can say this is, okay, I will have ax plus bu. That's fine, right? You can have whatever nonlinear relation of this. So <clears throat> you can say sign, uh, sign x1, right? You, you just, uh, x0 maybe, you just use the Python syntax here, okay? Plus cosine x, I, somehow I like sine cosine. Uh, u, u0, uh, okay? I'm just giving an example. We will give more concrete example later. Then you can say, okay, now I, can, I have everything I need to know to set a derivative. So the derivatives get mutable vector set from vector. Why we have a set from vector? Because this part is a basic vector. The reason is called get mutable vector. It's like a pointer thing in C++, when you convert to uh, Python, you, you have to specify, okay? So it means mutable vector means you can change it. All right, if there's no mutable term, that means you can't change it often time. But typically we just uh, get mutable vector and a set from vector. Then this derivative will be set. Okay, uh, the same thing is the calculate output y. This name I can change and the, the valuation is here. Then I here not only have state, I also have input and the state. Oh, sorry, not only have input here, but also have state, so you can tap in your formula for the output. Uh-huh. Your output function, that means output function. Oh, I didn't compute u here. You need to add u, yes. The, just like this. You need you, like this, self got here. Using this, if you need you, here, I didn't have, uh, well, I forgot to type in the you part. If you don't, sometimes you don't depend on you. Uh, actually, most of the time, if you don't have a direct feed through, your output is only a function of state, not you. But if you need you, you just need to add u equal to self dot get input port. 
uh, whatever, the, maybe zero dot eval. Uh, uh, okay, anyway, so you got, I don't want to write it down. If you have state, that's, con that's, about, that's continuous state, that means you have uh, this dynamical system and the continuous time. If you don't have continuous state, only have input output that's static. All right, you need to declare. That's like a zero state means, zero dimension of a state means static. It's like that. By default, everything is dynamic. Okay? Uh, another big category that we use quite a lot is discrete time. Okay? The same thing. Now it's the same structure. It's a discrete time linear system, live system, initialize. Now you need to discrete, what do you think? It's the same thing, it's just now this is a discrete state dimension. It's called declare discrete state, okay? But in addition to that, you also need to uh, find the sampling time. This is the sampling time. Okay, you need that. So the system knows how often they will look for you. If you say this is 100, then within 100 seconds, they, they will not bother you. They will just keep running other things because your output will be the same, okay? So the, it's called the periodic discrete update time. It's basically here is DT is 0 0.5 seconds, all right? Then uh, for, for this, we also need the here, so for discrete time, we need xk plus one equal to fxk uk and then yk equal to hxk and uk, right? So yk is the same, just calculate output y. And uh, here you just need to implement for discrete variables, you need to do calculate discrete variable updates. This is just uh, this guy, okay? Need to be implemented here. All you need to return is that here uh, you have context, event, you also have an event, but here we don't use that quite a bit. Event is triggered when you contact. Okay, this can simulate very complicated things, but for us, let's not worry about that. And uh, this create state, this is the update, the next one, or almost like a directive. So you get the current state, x, that's xk, u is current time uk, then x next, suppose here I somehow type in some kind of formula, that's the update. Then this guy get mutable vector set from vector. It's the same uh, grammar. Okay. Get mutable vector set from vector. Okay. So I will send you all the codes and uh, you will see it. So I hope you know at least roughly how to define this system. I will not test you. I will not ask you to define your own system. I will define for you. You just need to write one thing, maybe somewhere here. Tell me what's your uh, or output, right? Tell me how do you compute your controller output. That's it. Okay, I will give you a function so that you don't need to worry about this. But just for, your, for the sake of completeness or for your interest, you somehow, I encourage you to learn it, okay? Okay, and uh, block diagram construction. How to build, I mean, the second step, right? First one, you tell me the each system, you know how to define each system. Now you how to connect them. That's become simple. It's just, they call the diagram builder. You first have a, Blank diagram. So after this, you have empty thing. It's like almost in Simulink, you create a new file. Empty, now you can draw things now, okay? Uh, first, how to draw, all right? After this step, I draw, I mean, add system, system one. Suppose you define system before we, that's, add means that this, this is your my name, right? You need to add based on that name. So suppose my name is called system one, then add system one, you will have, after this, the blank thing has one thing, system one. Okay, after adding all of them, eventually, after this, what you have is the, of, I mean, what's in your picture? You can picture what's happening. Uh, 
system one, system two, randomly in somewhere here, but you don't know how they connect, but you add them to the file already. All right, so that's how it works. So do command line, but you picture what's happening as if it is a symlink. And then you build, builder, I mean this, I call this builder, you can call my builder or whatever, or block diagram, whatever. So builder.connect, now I start to draw lines. All right, so connect system one dot get output port zero, system two get input port zero. What are, what I'm doing? System one get output port, system one has only one output, right? Is output port zero is this guy, I connect this to system two input port zero. Zero is, I mean, the first one, okay? And the builder that connects system two get output port zero to system three get input port. I'm drawing this line, okay? The, this guy is drawing which line? System three, output port to system two input port one is drawing this line. That makes sense? Okay, very simple, right? If you were the people who write this code, that would also be <laughs> something you would do, right? So after this reconnect, we have this diagram. We just have this diagram, okay? Okay, if you want to take a look at the simulation, uh, record all the data, like a, you have a scope, <laughs> right? Uh, it's like a MATLAB, you can put a scope and to see the signals, and this is almost like that. So logger, so log output, and uh, which output you want to log, you need to tell them the builder, so which diagram you are talking about, and inside that builder, which one you are talking about, maybe three, and uh, so system three get output port zero to a logger. So that means I have a thing watching this. This is my scope, okay, that's my logger. Is this line just tell me, okay, I need to watch the signal here to record all the signals happening here. That's it. If you want to watch here, you add another log. It's called the same thing, log output. There will be system one, get output port, and the builder one, all right? And then diagram, if you finish, just build. This one you have to do, okay, after all this. That's how you connect the block diagram. Then after that, you do simulations, right? Your simulator is another class. You pass them the diagram you just built. You initiate a simulator, okay? And uh, well, they can, the, those are the things I don't think you need to worry about. That's, you, you can slow down the simulation <laughs> or, or make, I mean, this is target real time rate. That's typically you, you just real time, okay, one. Uh, I don't think you have to specify this, by the way. And uh, <coughs> context is something, as I mentioned, keep track of everything. That's got initiated, initialized here. Simulator.get got, got mutable context. There are different ways to create context, but here let's stick to this way. So simulator get mutable context. So this contact can be, so I can say set continuous state. Then I can tell them the current continuous state, that's the initial state. Set discrete state. If your system have discrete state, you can set it. And simulator advance to simulation time. So run the simulator to 10 seconds. Uh, which one? Uh, yes, of course. This is, uh, you need to give them initial state. So, uh, yeah, they're all in the same context, but you can get different uh, subsystem context, okay? You, so typically, if I have a small system, I know which one is, they are basically depending on how you add them. So the continuous state of the system one, be, for, for example, this is two dimension, 2D, this is 4D, then you have six dimension initial state you need to specify, all right? So you need to tell them six, okay? Uh, but, but also you can specify the content of individual ones. I think we will have example as well for that, okay? So contact class, I summarize all the uh, method that are typically useful 
because get continuous state, get uh, discrete state, get mutable continuous state, set continuous state, set discrete state, okay. So there's tons of uh, methods. Uh, I read all of them, but they don't have good documents, so I have to guess what they mean, okay. So anyway, finally we are here to do examples. Yuntian, you tell me an example you want to try. Uh, a, a car on the slope. Okay, that's your homework. Okay, so I will teach you basics. I have a principle I told you before. I do the simple, you do the hard one. Because simple illustration the, the concept, then you do the hard one, it's good practice. Okay, so let's uh, try first a static. Uh, let's, I don't have time to do all the static ones. Maybe I will just say, uh, Uh, let's first do a discrete time system, okay? Uh, let's say xk plus one equal to, Su Yu, you tell me, uh, update the equation you want. You don't know? How about two xk? Uh, maybe that's unstable. Point two xk plus five uk, okay? And the yk equal to sine xk. All right. So let's do this. This is a single dimension. That's very simple. Uh, <clears throat> here, uh, let's start from scratch. But I have all the codes available, by the way. So I think we can. Let's let's new a file. This is lecture what? Six. Point point five, six. Okay, lecture six, I Pi notebook. Okay, first of all, I need uh, uh, I need to import everything. Let's import everything here. So okay, so I need to plot. I need the from Patrick to import everything I need. Uh, I think that's somehow good enough for me to use, and also NumPy, and uh, okay. Then I need to define the discrete time system. I already defined some discrete time system. Let's copy it to see how much we can use it. Uh, this is x, uh, let's add a code. Let's run it first, okay. Okay. Uh, so now the discrete time system, unit, so how many state I have, discrete state? One. Uh, one, let's change that to one. Input, number of input dimension uh, is one, and the output is also one, right? This is too simple. Let's make it harder, okay? So let's say this is, yk is this, and the uk, all right? That's fine, okay. So <clears throat> output part will be two. So then I declare discrete state and declare input, just input. Declare output, that's fine. And declare up, update equation. Let's say that's my 10 millisecond, okay? Uh, now let's do calculate discrete state variables, update. That's where we should do this. And then x equal to count has got discrete state vector, copy to vector, I assume you do this. Then this is 0 0.2 times xk. What is k? Just x, right? Plus 5 times uk. I don't have u yet. I need to get my u, right? So u is what? Self dot Get input, get input port, okay, dot zero, right, dot evolve, evolve. Uh, it's like context, what? Oh yeah, context, you know this already, good. All right, so 
uh, let me take a look. I don't know what is it. So let's maybe I, I have this right here. You see, also need to do all this self get contact point evolve contact. Yes, that's right. Okay, that's and that's it. All right, that's the update equation already. Now I need to tell them the output, right? So now I, my output port is two. So uh, I got contacts, this. I also need to get input now. So that's my here. Uh, then our output is what? This is uh, uh, numpy dot sign x dot sign x, okay? Uh, let's use, I don't know whether they accept list or numpy array. Let's, for the sake of safety, let's say numpy array. And uh, the second one is u, right? Uh, cosine u or u, u, just u. So that's it. Transport, no, uh, there's a bracket here. They will take care of the uh, row vector output. That's why they set for a vector. I think so, okay. So if you run this pass, doesn't mean it works. Okay, because you, it, you, they didn't call it yet, okay. It's just uh, everything, there's no obvious uh, grammar issues. Now we need what? Draw a diagram. What can, how do we test the system? So now I have your system, Suyu system. Uh, Suyu, I say Suyu system. Okay, I have one input, I have output, right? So I want to simulate it. But if you just, this is open diagram, it doesn't simulate. You have to tell them what's the input. Okay, you have to pass something through there. And let's use the step. Okay, step is nothing but a constant with the magnitude is equal to one. So we can do this by, uh, let, me, let me copy this part. Uh, where is it, here? Testing, create simple diagram. Build diagram, right? My system, I add, uh, what, what, do, what do I call this? Let's change the name, okay, Shu Yu. Is that fine? Do you mind? Doesn't matter. Shu Yuan, okay. Yun Tian, okay. <laughs> Let's call that Yun Tian, okay? Yun Tian is fine, right? Yun Tian doesn't mind this. Uh, then here you should tell them this is Yun Tian, not Shu Yun. <laughs> Yun Tian. Okay, that's it. Do we have any uh, other things? No. Uh, that's my, uh, my system, Yun Tian. Depending on how you name it. Okay, let's say this is my system, Yun Tian. And the uh, builder that I add, now I have a constant vector source, which is one this step input. This is, you can write your own step input. This is just, they built in already, okay? It's like Yun Tian, you add to, uh, uh, class, you can call it as, as well. All right, that's step input. After you go do this, we are here, right? We are almost like uh, somewhere here. Somewhere here, right? We add all of them, we didn't connect them yet. So now let's connect them. So builder connect, step input get output port to my says Yun Tian. That's, that's Yun Tian, get input port. Then I log my sys Yun Tian. I keep calling you. Uh, builder. And uh, I also log uh, input. I want to see the step input. I don't know why that's the case. Anyway, uh, step input builder, that's fine. Then build diagram build. So now I have a complete diagram. I need to start simulate. How to start simulate? Uh, I need to. Well, there are different ways to set the initial condition. This is one way as well. Let's, let's directly copy them. Uh, here. First of all, diagram can create a default contact as well. So here, I just use that, okay? And I can set discrete state. Here, I only have one state. Let's say 0.5. One dimension, right? So then I create simulator. In this way, I can, the simulator can pass the contact already uh, created. A simulator advanced to 10. And uh, then I can use plug things. Let's see how it works. 
error. That's what you like. Yuntian is not defined. We haven't made Yuntian yet. Let's say do that again. Okay, Yuntian now is defined. Oh, good. The system converts really fast. Okay. Let's uh, let's see maybe five seconds. Five seconds. It's too. I mean, they convert too fast. Let's make a system convert slower. This is uh, 0 0.9, 5, 8, okay? Yuntian redefined, and I run it again. A lot of, <laughs> why is that? Why there's also this? I don't think so. Oh, output is sign. Depend on sampling time, you're right. The output is sign, not the x. If I change this, sorry, I have to modify you, Yuntian. I modify Yuntian system. This is uh, U. Uh, sorry, this is X. I directly output X. Uh, that should be better. Yeah, that should be something you see commonly. Gradually converge to some steady state, which is not one. All right, because you have a uh, the system has some gain. All right, that's the simplest discrete time system, and. How much time we have? 10 minutes? Let's run a continuous time system, all right? Let's directly, I don't copy them. Let's ex explain what I have. Now the continuous time I define a, you can define arbitrary continuous time system. Here I define a system that we use quite a bit, like A, B, C, D, like a linear system. So I can pass those uh, matrix as additional parameters to the class, okay? So then uh, I automatically extract the dimension information from those ABC matrix. This is uh, the shape zero, shape one. This is the number of input, number of state, number of output. Okay, so then you define state vector, declare continuous state, declare input, declare output, and I have to record this as a membership, uh, some kind of variable in my system. Then do time, calculate time derivatives. Means you're specifying your vector field, right? First of all, I get the state. So count as get continuous state vector because the basic vector you have to copy to vector and then get input. So this is self, uh, did I, okay. Self get, uh, I don't think I need that. Okay, this is the self get input port zero evaluate, that's get my x. Then my x dot, or the derivative is nothing but a times x, b times u. Okay, I didn't try whether I can just use a, a star or not, but for the sake I just use uh, this, uh, <laughs> suppose there are numpy arrays, okay. Uh, <clears throat> then derivative get multiple vector from x dot, that's fine. Output is c times x no U anymore, okay? So I can run it. Uh, okay, this is Yuntian continuous time, Yuntian, Yuntian, okay? Uh, continuous Yuntian. Then, uh, run again, yes. Now I have testing, I, I gave those uh, A, B, C, D, all right? I don't think I need D. Uh, so then I build a diagram builder, the empty, then I need to add system, right? The, uh, this is a continuous Yuntian, Yuntian, ABC. ABC is what I defined. That will be passed to the initialization function of, the, of this system. Then uh, let's just call it my sys, okay? Step input is like what we did before. Then I do connections. I'm still trying to test the step response. In this case, I have three dimensional state. Why? Because my A matrix is like that. Uh, let's see how it works. That's uh, three output. Why my output is three? Because my identity matrix C, okay. So I, my output is the same as the state. You can change your output. Okay, I have three output. They are evolving like this. Okay, is this system stable? Yeah. 
you can guess it's stable, right? Okay, to convert to some steady state value. But doesn't convert to zero yet, okay? Because if you don't have input, they will die out to zero. If you say, uh, if you see the zero input response, let's say this is zero. That's zero input response, like x k equal to e to the k x, something like that, right? So in that case, you will see everything should eventually convert to zero. That's the definition of asymptotic stability. Okay, uh, that's continuous time. And uh, I have five more minutes. What do we want to do? Okay, by the way, we're going to assign project to today. Okay, and it's based on Drake. Uh, it's, it's, it's a real kind of a segue control system. Uh, but I'm going to give you the code for couple. Let's say this is a couple example. Uh, let's first run it. Uh, let me run it first, okay? Uh, I'm using the building now QR controller, but you don't have, you can declare your own controller. Uh, so my controller at plant, let's see. Controller, where's the controller? Let's now use that. Let's use the LQR controller. Okay, I, I just want to show you how it works. Uh, this is the car pole. Uh, it balanced, convert to zero state. Okay, I don't want you to do this. Okay, I want you to do a sideways. Well, similar, but uh, this is repeating now. It's repeating the simulation. The LQR controller make it go back and also make it upright. If you don't have a good control, it will fall, right? So suppose I don't have a good control. I would say, uh, well, it's, uh, I don't think I have enough time to illustrate that. But for this case, the only difference here, okay, I don't want you to uh, do this for your, ex for your simulation, but I will configure everything for you. Uh, is, is that the carpool has a URDF file? Okay, although it's a simple one, it has URDF. URDF is here, it's a carpool. I think I downloaded from Drake's uh, website. They have their own carpool uh, things. All this URDF, I want you to think this way. The URDF is one way to tell the system about, uh, I haven't done this yet, about this equation. About this equation. The carpool has its own dynamic equation. You can derive it, okay? For simple carpool, you can still hand calculate it. But for general, really kind of uh, more links, it will be comp com very complicated to derive this by hand. So URDF tell you, ask you, okay, what's the mass of different links, how they connect, that's it. Then the, the, the equation are automatically should be constructed. You don't have to compute this. This is, it's done, okay? So URDF is nothing. You think about URDF is one way to write down the equation for simulators, okay? You just tell them what's the mass, where it's located, how they connect, uh, and uh, that's it. And so, I think one more thing I want to say it's let's see two minutes let me quickly go through this example with one and a half minutes maybe I wanted to con define a feedback output feedback controller for the plant okay Suppose that the system is given this. Next time I'm going to go over the example in details. I just want to say you need to discretize it. That's a discrete system that use discretization, right? And then you select your desired pose. Suppose your pose is this, then the Z domain pole, discrete pole would be E to the S, E to the S one, two times T, okay? And you design your gain, 
use place, for example. I don't need you to do uh, by hand those kind of things, but you can use place function. You can you need design observer again and implement this. Uh, I think I don't have time, so I will go through this more carefully next time. And you should start looking to project, and so this time, I think for, in order for you to learn it better, I want you to be paired, okay? Two or three students can be in one group, because it involves Drake. I don't think uh, a single student may get stuck. Okay, let's uh, get started with the today's lecture and uh, actually continue our discussion from last time. We are going to give more examples about control design testing in Python. Okay, as I mentioned, the very, very hard part to replace MATLAB is not, not all the toolbox, it's just the simulink. Those block diagram thing that we are used to, uh, it's very simple, it's very, uh, convenient for us to construct complicated systems through simple input output connection of different blocks. Low things I don't have any substitute in, in Python. I cannot find any good ones. So, uh, but I think Drake, uh, in addition to be a very excellent robotic simulator, is also a good uh, substitute for uh, MATLAB Simulink and the Simscape, those kind of stuff. Okay, so that's another appealing feature of Drake. Uh, I assume most of you have installed it and play with it a little bit. It's hard to debug. You got my sympathy, okay? It's hard to debug. It's taking me some time to find one single error. It's hard, so that's why I think you should have teammates to discuss. Uh, I think the problem is simple enough this time so that you should be able to manage to finish, especially after today's lecture. Okay, let's uh, have a quick review from what we have uh, of last week. As I mentioned before, I think I want you to remember no matter, how, no matter how fancy the simulator you see from other people, it's nothing but doing three things. As I mentioned before, it's just the constructing differential equations or different kind of sensor models, geometry models. Okay, those are just tell the system how it looks, how they interact, what's the physical laws, and there's different ways to specify those models. And actually, URDF are one way to, sim to, to specify robotic system model. Okay, including the geometry, which link connect to which and how they rotate, uh, as well as some dynamic uh, system behavior, which is captured by ODEs, okay? And then you need to solve differential equation, then you need to visualize, okay? If you keep these three pillars in mind, I think you have a very good high level view of the simulators. And so last time we start talking about how Drake works, okay, in a way that I'm not telling you individual kind of functions explain one by one, but it just tell you that the, the basic structure, right, you want a system diagram, block diagrams, okay, you need to three things, how to specify either a function, that describe input output relationship, or is a differential equation or difference equation. So you should, when you, when you learn anything, you should think as if you are the designer of this tool, you know, what you should do, right? And I think we all go through that. We have a Yuntian system designed last time, right? So it's based on our common sense, how to define these things, right? And then these two things, uh, I think, uh, how many? Uh, I mentioned a few kind of uh, examples, including static system examples and uh, discrete time and continuous time examples, okay? And we set up diagram to simulate them last time. I think that's fine. Uh, so the key is that you, ha you have to define a class that inherit from the left system, the leaf system, and uh, declare input port, output port, and how you compute the uh, output function based on the system input as well as the system state if the system is a dynamical system, okay? And you, you can connect the different blocks using builder connect, dot connect, then you set up simulators, and the most important thing is you need to specify initial state from the context, okay? Those are the key things. Of course, 
you won't be able to do it unless you have some examples or enough examples to learn from. I think that's all we learn. The really hard part for Drake is that they don't have too many examples. So that I'm making example for you. It's hard for me to find this thing as well. I, I have to read all this documentation from Drake. I think the best way to learn is from this uh, API. This is, you can navigate through this. It's not hard. If you get used to it, it becomes useful. It's just from here, API documentation. You don't look at the Python one. Python doesn't, it's, it's not good. And uh, the C++ one has enough information. But I agree that at the beginning, it's hard for you to really kind of uh, get used to the notation and the way they describe things or model things. But after a while of using it, it will be fine, okay? But that's for advanced students. If you really want to learn it well, you may go through that. I think for this uh, project or for this class, it's enough for you to just follow, just know Python and uh, follow uh, the example I gave in class would be sufficient, okay? Uh, let's now go to one more complete design, observer and controller design, okay? We learned, what did we learn? We learned state feedback control design by placing the eigenvalues, right? Is that true? Yeah. And then we do output feedback. What we did is we design observer to estimate state because we don't have full state measurement, okay? So let's use one example to illustrate the whole design process, then use Drake, all right, to simulate the behavior, okay? Uh, first example is, uh, I forgot what, I think there's physical meaning of the example, I forgot, but let's just treat it as a academic exercise for now. Uh, let's say we given a continuous time system. It's two dimensional, okay, it's a second order system. A, C, B, C, C, C is a continuous time, okay? And, uh, but we want to design controller in discrete time. The reason is that whenever you implement anything nowadays, you use embedded system or, or computer system, it only have a sampling time. It always have sampling time, right? No matter how small the sampling is, maybe one millisecond or 10 or 100 millisecond, it's discrete time in nature. So typically, you, you, you are given a physical system, like a circuit, RK circuit or motor, and they have a continuous time model. Uh, we learned how to find a discrete tangent. You have to distinguish discretization versus linearization. There are different things, right? Okay. Discretization is that we have, it's just Euler difference uh, law and to approximate derivatives. So AD is identity plus AC times sampling time. Here I chose the sampling time to be uh, 10 millisecond, 0 0.01. And then I assume you know those formulas now, or you can even derive them. And CD is just the continuous time C as well, all right? Now I select closed loop eigenvalues, the desired eigenvalues I want the system to work at, and select them. We learn how to do that. If I have second order system, it's just we have dominant poles. We don't have any dominant poles, just two poles, right? And we, dis we, we discuss how to, con how to use the uh, performance index, right? This is like a, a percent overshoot, steady state error, rise time, those things. Those requirements can be translated into the locations of the dominant poles. In this case, I just, I didn't go through that whole design process. I just randomly picked two things, okay? Negative two plus minus J. It could be bad, could be not ideal, but somehow we're, let's say, we, we, we stick with it, okay? And after selecting the continuous time desired eigenvalues, we now select desired discrete time poles or eigenvalues. But that's according to the relation of e to the st, okay? t here is 0 0.01. Okay, now we design state feedback gain using place function. Or, I mean, in your exam, I will ask you to design by hand. Right, by doing what? Change the controllable canonical form, then place the pose. 
by modifying the last row of your controllable conical form A matrix because that's the coefficient of the characteristic polynomial. I hope you can, you start review, right? Did you, for midterm, for quiz? Midterm is next Wednesday, right? Uh, you haven't started review, so next Wednesday, maybe you'll start review next Tuesday. <laughs> okay. I hope you can spend at least a few days. Uh, but your few days is not whole day of uh, empty time slots. You, you, I think you're busy. You're more, more busy than me, right? You have so many classes, so many activities, so many friends to meet, right? So many things you care about. I think nowadays there are a lot of uh, distractions. So you got my sympathy, okay? I think that's true. When I was your age, I think I, think I did the same thing. All right, that's fine. Uh, all I can guarantee is that if like this class you, you, you want to learn, I will provide you opportunity to learn it well. That's the only thing I can offer. I encourage you to do review well because midterm is quite important, okay? Uh, <clears throat> For design, let's say for even for the uh, a project, we can just use a place function. There's a MATLAB place function on there in, in, in Python, there's the equivalent functions. Suppose we can do it now, okay, that's fine. Now we can select, but in this case, C is 1D, right? C is one dimensional, the state is two dimensional. That means the output only give you one number while you have two dimensional state. We can design observer to observe all the states. As I mentioned before, observer gain, sorry, observer has its own eigenvalues and you need to design, let's say uh, find, we need to find observer gain L. Did you remember? Such that, such that uh, a minus observer so L C the eigenvalues equal to egg desired. Okay, we see this case is the E to the observer egg times T. This is observer S, the continuous time observer again. What's the relation between the observer angle value and the controller angle value. Did you see the, the difference? Observer angle value is more stable than the, this one, right? What do I mean by more stable? If you have a continuous time complex plane, this is open left half plane, right? Open left half plane. The more it, it is, to the left, the more stable the system is, right? So the angle value here is negative two plus minus j. This is the observe, uh, the controller angle values. And then we place observer angle values here, more stable. Because the controller, as I mentioned before, okay, observer is almost like an inner loop. The controller assumes the state it used is correct. That assumption only makes sense if your observer updated its, I mean the time, time constant of the observer is much faster in their loop, okay? Whenever the controller need something of the state, it's already almost converted to the true state. I hope you can, and this is a little bit hand waving, but, but I hope you can, you can at, at least uh, get that. So observer, the angle values need to be more stable, so I choose this. Can we choose to be negative 10 or yes, of course, okay? I mean, it's up to you and there's trade-offs, okay? Uh, <clears throat> we can make it larger. Uh, so once we find the observer again, as I mentioned before, observer again, how do we find it? We can also use place, right? It's place, typically place is for A, B, okay, place function. But in this case, we need to use what? A transpose. C transpose. That gives me K tilde with take a transpose will be my observer gain. That's for the last lecture. You, you, you somehow you need to review it. We also have a Python, uh, Python 
code example that I gave, but I went through it pretty quick. And uh, I think I'll upload it already so you can take a look how to do the observer gain design. Okay, once we have the observer gain, then we have another dynamical system, which is observer. I want you to think the observer, it's a, if you think about it, observer itself is a dynamical system. Let's call it observer, observer. The input, there's two input, right? The U and the my Y. That's U and the Y is the system control and the system output, right? You use the system input, system output to guess or observe or estimate the internal state. The output is my X hat, right? That's my uh, observer. And hopefully X hat will converge to X asymptotically. That's guaranteed if your gain is designed, which is uh, observer dynamics is stable. Okay, that's uh, what we have done before. Uh, now I'm asking you to think this is nothing. If you look at this, observer itself is a linear dynamical system. Let me write it down. This is a linear system as well. This is a linear system by itself with it's its own A. I'm observing its dynamics, right? What's the dimension of the observed dynamics? Does the observer have a state? As the system plant, right? So let's say A is n by n. That means my state is n by n. B is n by m. And the Y is P by n. Okay, that's my convention for notation, system dimensions. So uh, this is system with, uh, with what? With uk, yk as input, right? Which is, uh, uh, its dimension is what? It's m plus p. Okay, that's my input as input. That's the control, quote unquote control for the observer. And the state is x hat, k, which is r in. Okay, that's my observer state. And output is y, uh, let's call it, output is also x k hat, is also r in. Right? So it's C matrix is identity. Do you get what I mean? Observer itself has a state update equation, and its output is xk. It directly output the, uh, the state out. All right, that's the output of the observer. So the output is uh, it's n dimension, and that's how we can we can use standard linear system block to design or to to construct the observer block if we want. Or we can implement by ourselves, that's fine as well. All right, uh, I think that's enough for us to set up the problem. That's the procedure, keep this in mind. Now let's, uh, let's do coding, okay? Let's say this is my lecture six. Uh, that's the last time. Define test the linear system. That's Yuntian system last time. Let's see. Example continual time is also Yuntian system. Okay. Uh, today we are, uh, let's say, design output feedback. That's our, okay, simulate open loop transfer. Okay. So that's my uh, system. That's A, B, C, D. Is this the same? 30, uh, negative 60, 20, right? This is the same. That's my ABCD matrix, and I want to simulate its response. Okay, so how did I do it? I, first of all, I create the empty, it's like a new simulink model, 
or <laughs> okay, empty diagram. Don't be afraid of uh, those uh, words. It's typically better than drawing arrows, okay? Because you can completely specify what you want. Uh, then builder the art uh, dot add system. I have a linear system because this is a linear system, right? I just pass them A, B, C. Uh, I can just say D. I don't need this D. Okay, that's my linear system block. If you want to use this, you need to import linear system. Okay, so I think I imported here. If you didn't, you need to put it here. All the class you can from Drake, you can import them from Drake. Uh, pydrake .all, all to import it directly this class name. For example, if you want to say um, uh, there's modules, right? Uh, let's see, namespace module technical notes, <coughs> modeling dynamical system, primitives. Those are all these predefined. It's like a, if you do a symlink, there's a library. Library have so many linear system, transfer function, uh, summations or matrix gains, those things are, you can implement them and put them as a, a standalone block. Those are all these things. If you want to use any of those blocks, for example, we are using linear system. Okay, there's different ways to define linear system. Don't worry about this C++ uh, uh, those, those kind of uh, syntax. Uh, but if you want to use a linear system, then you can just import linear system and they'll define them. You can see how it works. I think we are defining linear system. Uh, let's say this is a continuous time linear system, right? So we are, I think we are using one of the ways this way to specify the linear system. I mean, there's different ways to define linear system, okay? Uh, here is just give A, B, C, D matrix. By default, the sampling time is zero. That means continuous time. If it's some point in time, it gives something that's non-zero, that would give a discrete time linear system. Just like what they describe here, if the sampling time is larger than zero, then they will have uh, uh, this AB means discrete time AB now, okay? Roughly, that's how you navigate through the, the C++ uh, API documentation to find what you need, if you need to do something advanced, okay? For here, I think I will tell you what you need. So either linear system A, B, C, D. I didn't say D, T, that means continuous time. Right, that's continuous time. Okay, then I add a, I want to test the step response. So I tap step response, I have a constant vector source that's almost like, a, a, I just want to give it source, a source, okay, step function. That means at the beginning start, it's always one, start from time zero, that means a step. Okay, so where did I know this thing? It's not magic, it's here. Okay, it's, uh, I think it's a constant, where is a constant? It's constant vector source, did you see it? Okay, this is a constant value source. Here we can use value source, it's not a vector. But I use the vector source because sometimes I want to use a multiple dimensional input source. Okay, it's just this. And uh, when, I, when we define, I think here, we also, we ha also kind of uh, import this as well. Okay, that's enough. Okay, all right, then, um, so I add a step function, then I connect step get output port to this continuous time system, then I this part is, uh, I just connect the output of my system to, uh, I just log, okay, record uh, the R system response, okay. I don't need this input response, by the way. I don't need to find the input, uh, record the input. So then I set the uh, initial state, start simulator, and then plot. Okay, that's what I did. Uh, I think I need to... First of all, I run this part. Why it takes so long? Okay, it's just starting. Uh, I don't need to define UNTN system anymore. So let's start from directly from here. Okay. That's the open loop response. How it looks. Is the system stable? Yeah, it's stable. 
looks stable, right? Uh, it, say that again. Will stable. That's a. I, I think that's uh, no. The, the, uh, well, that's incorrect. The stable is is not a will or no. It's just a system. Be property that's independent of time. The system is stable. A symptotic stable means it will eventually convert to zero. Uh, the internal state, if there's no input, okay, eventually convert to zero. So does this system eventually convert to zero? Yes. Yes, it is stable, but it's not the transient. I don't like, right? It's keep oscillating. It takes too long to converge. You can see that uh, if I change this vector sort to 10, let's say that. Now you take a look of this response. It's almost like convert to zero. I don't think so, though. That depends on the input. If I change the input, they will somehow, you can see, it's eventually convert to something non-zero, non of course. Uh, but when we talk about stability, we only want that com the zero input response, right? So, so anyway. That's a response. We may not like it. Let's design controller to, to do it, right? So when we design controller, we first, uh, this is the right thing. The sampling time is uh, 0 0.01. A is identity A times T. Uh, B, T. B, D is B times T. C, D is C, right? Everything, you should follow me as if you are solving the problem. Okay, any questions, by the way? Now I want to say, I want to have my control uh, angle values. This is different. Uh, let's uh, change that to be the same as negative 2 plus minus j, right? Plus minus 1j, 1j, OK? That's what we had in the note. May not be good angle values, OK? Um, so z desired is exponential i desired times t. Any questions? You should be able to think and write code. Okay? That should be easy. But the only thing that may take a long time is debugging. Because everyone makes mistakes. Okay. Uh, import, uh, I use this guy, okay, seek notes. You can import control packets, but for some reason my control packets are always cannot install the full version. They need a, the ISL. Why called, slight called, I don't know, but I can never, the pip, I don't have a conda system, so otherwise it will be easier. So I use this one, uh, sig the place pose, a, d, b, d, z desired, and that gives me a, a class, and the, the member fun, uh, variable game matrix is the game, right? So let's see, then I do the observer, you can see that. I change this observer. Let's not do this for, let's say that's 1j. Uh, either way is fine, okay. Let's use the lecture numbers. Then I do the same thing. I have a k tutor place because I use ad transpose, cd transpose. Did you see that from my here? a transpose, c transpose. A, B, controllable. A, C is observable if and only if A transpose, C transpose is controllable. I can place pose in that way, and that will be my K tutor. K tutor take transpose will be my L. That's what we covered last time. I don't want to repeat. Hopefully, you're fine with it. Anyway, you find L with K tutor dot gain matrix dot transpose. OK, we run this. and. Uh, we can check, let's see, let's check a little bit. Uh, IOA.ag, what is it? Uh, AD minus IO times CD, that should be my desired angle values. What is it? Minus no, that's continuous time. We're doing discrete time place, right? So we, we, we can check observer ag Z. That should be our, oh sorry, that should be our, these are angle values. These two should match. Are you with me? Okay, so these two should, be, should match. 
point 92, uh, well, let's say point 0.92, point 0.92, something like this. Uh, plus, minus, okay. This is point 0.92, three, right? The, 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 the second one is the angle vectors, okay? The first one is angle vectors. So it's roughly right. We place it in the right place. Okay, now um, we don't, let's not worry about this. Here I implement this observer by myself. Okay, I didn't call the building function of ABCD because that's take other effort. We can try that if I have time today, but let's, there's two ways, okay? I directly, the way I implement it is, I directly do this block. Okay, how many input port I have? Two. The first one is U, it's from the, the controller output, right? And this guy, uh, let's, let's draw the similar link or block diagram. So whenever you implement, I, I encourage you to draw the block diagram in front of you and use that as a reference to type in the code. Otherwise, sometimes you got confused. Even just, we have a few blocks, okay? So, for example, uh, our observer, let's say this is my controller. Controller is not, nothing but k, negative k times what? The observer output x hat, okay? x hat k. That gave me uk, right? That's immediate, it gave me. There's no dynamics, right? It's just gain times that. Uh, then this will send to my plant, that my system. System will give me what? Y, okay? At any given time, it's just also YK. And these two are both sent, let's call this observer, my observer, observer. Uh, this is my Y, this is my U, and observers will send this thing, okay? I have three blocks I need. Right? Of course, I will, I will put a scope here. That's my scope. Okay, that's a log. Log output, okay? That's my scope. So that will be my block diagram. I hope everyone is, uh, let's, let's try to implement this. So plant, we already added. It's a just built-in function from, from Jake. Negative k is just a gain. So we can use the gain block of, uh, of Jake. Uh, here we have some special structure, okay? Uh, I, I didn't check whether Jake have it or not, but let's, let's do our own version, okay? So we need this guy, and this is a dynamical system, right? Its own state update are like this, okay? So let's, uh, let's keep this in mind. Let's try to see how they implement this. Again, you just copy the whole structure. This would be, as I call it, discrete time observer is a inherent, inherited from leaf system. That thing you don't change, you, you can modify the name of the class. And what do you need, what do you need inside this class to initialize it? So here, I think I need A, B, C, and L. Oh, that's it, right? This A, B, C should be what? The discrete time version of the system dynamics, right? This should be, if, if according to our, this would be AD, BD, CD, okay? It's not, it's not, um, uh, this, this would be AD, if I want to make it more clear. This is AD, BD, CD, AD, CD, BD. Okay, I always what we find. Okay, very simple. This uh, linear dynamics. Okay, so uh, we just uh, in, whenever I initialize it, I need to pass additional parameters. So I have a, b, c, l, t is d t here. Okay, I need d t because because uh, this is a discrete time block. It's update every d t. I need to tell them how often it, this block will be update value. Okay, so. <clears throat> Well, I make it a little bit more general than we need. Actually, this, in this case, we know n is two. M is one, C, uh, P is one as well, right? But I just, I can got those numbers from ABC matrix. 
Okay, so I de uh, declare discrete time state, which is n, which is two in this case. Then I define input. How many input I have? Two input four. The first one, uk. The second one is yk. You can name it whatever you want. Can you make the first one yk, second one uk? Yeah, of course. You can define another 100 input ports. That depends on how you use it, okay? The only thing matters is that if sending the right information, the output should be correctly computed. That's what we need, okay? Then I define output, the system output. So declare vector output port, I call this. So that's why sometimes uh, you can give the name that's more informative. Here I said x hat, which is x estimated. That's my output port name. If you want to search in the future, that's how I search it. The output, how many dimension? Also, n dimension is two, two dimension. You need to give the estimate of the true state. I'm oh, sorry, to give the estimate of the state. Then I calculate output. I have one additional thing that maybe will be confusing for many of you. Uh, in this particular case, because of the Python wrapper of Zwick, uh, sometimes I need this. The reason is uh, it's called set self. You don't, well, you don't need to reuse it, okay? All state ticket. The only meaning is that this block only depends on state. There's no direct feed through. Let me repeat. The why only depend on system state, does not depend on immediately of the system input. That's what's the meaning of it. The reason is that if you can, let me explain using one minute. Did you see a loop here? Did you see a loop here? Right? This is a loop, okay? The output of observer if output observer depends on the input immediately, let's say this observer is a gain. It's a gain, let's say the observer is just two. This is not dynamic, it's two. It's two times input, okay? Then two times input should be this output, and this output times another two should be this input. This input should be, and there's an algebraic loop. It has to satisfy certain relation in order for it to hold. We don't want algebraic loop. Okay, so, the, so that's why, so this observer cannot depend on the input directly. Okay, so and in fact, it didn't. It's, it's only depend on state, right? And, but those information is not uh, automatically, cannot automatically be determined from Drake. So you need to tell Drake this, there's no dependence immediately on input vector. So that's why we need this thing. Otherwise, they will complain there will be an algebraic loop in this particular case, okay? So let's say that. So whenever you see algebraic loop, you need to think whether you do have a loop or not. If you do, then you need to reformulate your problem. If not, uh, oftentimes, this command will save you, all right? Uh, <clears throat> so then I declare a periodic update, dt. Then I record what I need because I need those things later in the class. Uh, so later in the uh, system update or calculating system output. Now what we do is we do state update equation. Right? We need to somehow enter this equation in the system. So x hat k is the observer state. Right? How it got updated? A times XK, B times UK, IO plus, just directly enter it. Okay, just directly enter it. Of course, you need to make sure all the symbols are correctly, uh, correctly represent what you actually mean or want. Okay, how do we get XK? What is XK? XK is the state. So state is from the context of Drake. So context got discrete state vector, copy to vector. Why we need a copy to vector? Because the Drake has a so-called basic vector uh, structure. You can think about that as a data structure. All right, what about UK and YK? They are not, 
they are all input of the system. So it is a self got input port zero, evaluate context, self got input port one, evaluate with the current context, you get yk, xk. Then I somehow copy abcl, and this xk, um, I think, uh, Drake, I think the, the, the NumPy array thing has some kind of subtleties. Okay, sometimes it's a one D array, it's not really a matrix, so I, I have to reshape it. I, I want to make sure it's a column vector. Okay, I should reshape it and make it a matrix, so I don't need to use those at symbol to do the calculation. But either way is fine, it's up to your implementation. And this is to looks more clean to me. Next is this. Then I set the next from vector, this x next. Is this too hard? I think it will be simple later, right? Uh, uh, as we move on. So now, what's the output? The system output is just a state. Whatever you estimate the current state is, you just output it. So the output is what? You got the system state, you set from vector. This y is just your x. That's my, that is not Yuntian observer, it's a Lundberg observer, my implementation of it. Okay, that's, that's now, now let's uh, run it. When you see this check, it doesn't mean it, it's, everything is correct because a lot of error will show up in the runtime. And uh, I, I, have, well, I haven't configured my uh, VS Code to do debugging um, yet, okay? So debug a Jupyter Notebook, I need to set up something I haven't. But, uh, but typically you can do print something to find out whether some dimension is, is not is, is corrupted or not. Okay, now let's simulate. Let's simulate. How to simulate? Uh, well, I think in above I didn't import matrix gain. Now I import matrix gain. So again, I set up a empty block diagram and the continuous time system is my ABCD. Uh, why I have a continuous time is DT. Oh, I, sorry, now I have a all I call it continuous time system is uh, I use A, D, B, D, C, D, okay? Um, I, thought I forgot why, let's try that first. Let's assume our block, the plant, is exactly the discrete time system we assume. Okay. Uh, now I have my controller, is builder I system, matrix gain, negative K. What is a K now? Uh, do we have a K yet? Yes, that's my K. Okay, that's fine. So add this matrix gain, then I add my observer, DT observer, just, we just got it. A, D, B, D, C, D, I, O, T, that's fine. Then I do connections. How many block I have? Three, right? Now I need to co connect them. I need to connect them. My controller got, get output port, continuous time system. My controller get output port, my observer input, you see? My controller output will send to two places. One is to the plant, the other one is to observer, the first input port of observer. And next one is system get output port zero to observer input one, the second input port. Now, and uh, my observer get output to my controller get input port, observer output here. It's up to you which line you want to draw first, but you know which code correspond to which line your drawing. Okay, now I can log output, I can simulate, then now I need to specify different systems. So how many dynamical system I have? This one is static, I don't need any, I mean, what do I mean by dynamic? For dynamic system to simulate it, you need what? You need initial state, you need to set up initial state. So I have plant, it's my dynamic system. I need to initialize state. How many state I have? Two, two dimension. Observer also, okay? So, uh, let's see. So observer, that's my plant. I set a discrete state observer because I assume it's discrete as well. So it is 0 0.10. And observer, I set discrete state is zero, zero. 
So the observer state means the estimate of the, con uh, of the plan state. They are different means the initial guess is wrong, but that's fine, right? That's why we need observer. We, we will never be able to get the initial state correct. Okay, so an advance to zero, uh, 10. Okay, that's the system setup. If you don't see desired behavior, that's fine. Okay, we will debug through that maybe offline. So I didn't try everything <coughs> yet. At least it's better than before, right? So now I, uh, look, do we have a reference now? We don't. The only thing we hope now is everything convert to zero. Okay, I don't have a reference to control it. I will do tracking later in this class, but here is, I want to make sure to stabilize the system. <clears throat> do this, is this better? You think it's better? Let's try uh, another one. Um, let's see, a place pose at different locations. Let's say this is my, make it faster, hopefully. Okay, uh, two times one J, uh, four, two times one J. One J means the imaginary uh, part. Is this fine? Then I have, let's do this thing. Four, is that right? That's fine, no, that's no, no problem. I think you can actually sign it, it's, of course. The further, the smaller this guy is, the better. Okay, let's uh, run it, it's finished. Um, ho let's do that again. I don't think we need to rerun observer block. Let's run this one. Seems like faster, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, convert to zero faster. So you can play with it. Um, <clears throat> I forgot why I choose the discrete time. The plant becomes the, the true system. No, 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 that's f Yeah, that's fine. We are, we are sampling. Because this, this thing got changed only every t. Delta T, so this is already a discrete time system, no matter this is continuous or not, okay? Uh, let's try, I'm not sure why I did that, maybe there's some bug. Um, if there's bug, we will we'll fix that offline, we'll send you a correct version offline. Let's do that for the continuous one. That's A, B, C, D. Do we have a D? I, did I specify D? Yes, yes, okay. So then I can use D. Uh, then I didn't specify DT, that means continuous time. Now I really have a continuous time. Let's call it continuous time, sys, this, okay? So I think it should have similar result. Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, let's see how it, oh, there's a lot of things I need to change. Now I, I comp this, this is not discrete anymore, right? This is a continuous time state. I need to resign it. It's called site continuous, continuous. Oh, I'm, I'm too state to, uh, similar. I think it's a little bit, the, the, the smaller the TT is, the, 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 the more closer it is, okay? All right, so when I debug, I want to make sure everything is agree with the theory, so I debug it when I use the uh, discrete time version, but I think it should work as well. Any questions for now? Okay, uh, then we will move to carpal balancing, that's your project. Okay, I'm not going to go through it in a way that uh, at least you have a starting point. I don't think I will solve everything for you, but at least I will go through something. And also teach you how to do a numerical, sorry, symbolic Jacobian matrix because you are bad on deriving Jacobians. All right, let's take a break for now.
Okay, the second one is carpool balancing. Is this your project too? I think it's a, uh, will take some effort for you to really learn Jake, at the same time do the project. So I will talk uh, a little bit about how to do this problem. It's almost like a strong hint for you to get started, but you still need to do quite a lot of work, I think, right? I think most of the work is not it's not about, uh, it's nothing hard. It's really conceptual understanding. Some of you have some weak point, those kind of, uh, or misunderstanding of certain concepts. Those misunderstanding somehow coupled with your infamiliarity with Drake can make things dramatically harder. You see what I mean? It's nothing is too hard. It's just a few small hard things or things you didn't understand fully, they combine together can give you a big trouble. That's how I feel, all right? So if everything is clear, this should be, should be fine, all right? Uh, <clears throat> so this is a, some people actually, they, they do a simulation by themselves. They ask me, they, they basically simulate this nonlinear dynamics. And, uh, but in Drake, I gave a URDF file, right? The URDF, almost serves that purpose of this thing, as I mentioned. URDF specify everything the simulator needs to draw, to visualize the system, as well as the dynamics behavior of the system, okay? So URDF, when they convert to dynamic system, it will give you the same thing, okay? In this case, I want to discuss a little bit about this model. Uh, I assume everyone knows what's going on, and uh, because I use a different notation here, let's use z dot, double dot, okay? This is f z, z, uh, where's x? There's no x anywhere else, all right? Let's call this z, because I want to use s, x as a state vector, okay? So in this case, what's the dimension of your system? Four dimensions, state space form, dimension is four. You have two degree of freedom. One is along x axis, the other one is the rotation of your pendulum. Okay, so in this case, my state is z theta, z dot, theta dot. Okay, if you want to use state space model to solve problems, you have to make it state space model first. I can arrange different ways. I think that's how Drake arrange the state vector. So it's, I can also define x as z, z dot, theta, theta dot, that's also fine. Okay, but here I use this one. Z, theta, z dot, theta dot. So then what's my vector field? x dot equal to z dot, z dot is x3, right? Let's just use z dot, that's fine. and. Uh, what about theta dot? Theta dot is a theta dot. The reason I can keep it here because theta dot is one of the state, all right? And what else? Z dot dot is z double dot. Z double dot is this, right? So this equation, this is, let's call it one. The equation one, uh, um, yeah, that's fine. It's a function of theta, uh, sorry. It's a function of all the state, so basically, is a function of z, theta, z dot, uh, z dot, theta dot, okay? And then I have a second one, this is, I call this two. This two, function two is also a function of these four variables, okay? And this whole thing, we have a name for this whole thing, this is called a vector field, right? X. X is nothing but this whole vector, okay? Okay, so that's a nonlinear model, is that right? Can I write it like uh, this fx as ax plus bu? It doesn't, you cannot use, make, it's not linear, it like, has a lot of sine, cosine, right? But we only learned design linear controller, what we should do? Linearize, that's the sec uh, lecture two. Linearize it. I'm not sure how much uh, you understood the linearization we introduced. Linearization is nothing but compute Jacobian 
of a vector field around equilibrium point. Okay, uh, the equilibrium is one of the equilibrium. Equilibrium means what? F x hat equal to zero in, in continuous time. Okay, uh, sorry, there's a u right. There's a u hat as well. It's a u hat equal to zero. Oh, here's there's a u. Sorry, there is u. U is what f x. What is? Uh, sorry, we call it f z now. Okay, so we linearize. We can linearize. Linearize around this equilibrium x hat. Ah, x hat is zero. Zero. Oh, uh, sorry. We want to linearize where. Theta, uh, of course, zero is the equilibrium, but we want to linearize around another equilibrium, which is pi. Okay, the way we define this, the theta is like, when it's really downward, pointing strictly downward is zero. When it's upward, then it's pi. So we linearize this, z is zero, but theta is pi. z dot is zero, theta dot is zero. That's one unstable equilibrium. If you don't have input, that's unstable. And u hat is zero. Uh, I don't need to do this Python type of notation, that's zero, okay? Uh, <coughs> so we linearize around it. How to do linearization? Just Jacobian. So this is nothing but x dot, f, x, and the u. That's the truth dynamics. We want to linearize it around x, that's Taylor expansion, right? And I know now this is zero, I, uh, but I want to keep everything complete. Is here, is zero. And partial f, partial x, evaluated at x hat, u hat. This is my a hat times x minus x hat. Right, that's delta x. Plus partial f, partial u, evaluated x hat, u hat. This is a big matrix times u minus u hat. And times high order terms, high order terms, which we ignore. Okay, so linearization, after linearization, you have a relative dynamics that relative to the equilibrium, the operating point, x hat and the u hat. Okay, so uh, this will be my a hat, right? This would be my b hat. Uh, and this part, if, because its equilibrium is zero. Any questions? Okay, so you know that becomes, I have a linear system relative my, to my equilibrium. You know this guy, x dot equal to x minus x hat dot. Uh, d d t, because x dot is x dot minus x hat dot is zero, right? X hat is a is a constant if you take derivative is zero, right? So the relative dynamics is. So this becomes delta x dot. This is delta x, okay? Delta x dot equal this is zero equals a hat delta x plus b hat delta u. That's where we have this linearized system. Anyway, so this is almost like a review for you. I hope from this practice you get more familiar with this. Uh, now let's do some coding. So in order to compute A hat, B hat, what do you need? You call this Jacobian, right? This is a function. And you so you know this, right? This is nothing but partial f1, partial x1, partial f1, partial x2 is four by four matrix in this case, okay? And you substitute the equilibrium, you got this matrix. Let's do it not by hand. I think you should do it by hand. I don't like doing it by hand. I like the coding. So let's, uh, where is it? Here. Uh, linearize. Linearizing using symbolic computation in, in Python. Uh, 
basically, I want to linearize or find the Jacobian of fx and u. Okay, so uh, here I already do it. I will upload the code for you, but you can do it by hand. This is only four by four. A lot of block, a lot of entries are zero, so you don't need to do it. Uh, if you have really big matrix, you, you, you can use these symbolic calculations. And we import SymPy as Sim. So I define the symbols. T, G, I don't need T, T is time, okay? MC, MP is the, this just the card mass and the pole mass. And uh, L, FX, I'm still using FX, should be FG, okay? But anyway, let's not change it. Uh, those are symbols. That's our constant in this case, right? Uh, variables, there are theta, z. Uh, I, well, they are all constant. There's just symbols, okay? You can think about them as symbols. Let's, uh, let's uh, let me run it. Let's divide this here, okay? Let's run it. Uh, you can see that, let's say, theta d is nothing but, oh, what is it? T-H-A-A -A theta d is nothing but theta d. I just, I mean, it's just a symbol. I tell uh, Python, whenever you see theta d, it's this theta d. And theta d means, in my notation, this theta derivative dot, okay? Um, so if you do uh, if you do fx fx uh, no this is fx here fx this is fx it's just like a, now MATLAB knows what does this symbol or variable means it means symbolically those constants all right now you can see this uh, this really kind of complicated formulas. Uh, how do I get rid of this part? Uh, control B. Control B? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, control B okay, great. Uh, <clears throat> so this is ZDD is nothing but this equation. Okay? This equation. Can I see it? So it's nothing but 1 divided MC plus MC times sine theta squared. This part. Mm -hmm and times this, okay? So eventually I have ZDD, theta DD, and I define my X vector, my total uh, vector is my the same matrix. I put these four things. I'm just typing this. Z, theta, ZD, theta D, or Z derivative, theta derivative. I just put them in, and uh, vector field is another symbolic expression. Is matrix is also ZD, theta D, ZDD, theta DD, okay? Uh, let me divide it, let's see. If you plot, uh, let's say, vector field. It's just my vector field. Is, I just add in this, right? It's just a z dot. I mean, you treat z dot as a, uh, as a zd as z dot. Theta dot, those are the z double dot and the theta double dot. Okay, those are functions of the things we just type in. What I need now is to do Jacobian of f with respect to x and Jacobian of this f, the vector field, with respect to what? U. Okay, so now let's first of all, this is very simple. Vector field, Jacobian, with respect to these four variables. So that means you want uh, this uh, analytic expression to take derivatives with respect to z, with respect to theta, this is z and theta, that's x1, x2, with respect to zd, and with respect to theta d. Okay, here there's some kind of uh, theta d here as well in the last coordinate, right? So <clears throat> then another thing is that I want to do the Jacobian which is by partial u. u is just one variable which is this, okay? So you just tell them, okay, I want this function to take Jacobian with respect to these variables, okay? So if you do this, um, you can see that PF, PX is just something 
uh, you will typically do. All right. So I think you can do it. I cannot because I'm old. You should be able to do it. And then, well, right. And the, I think you should try it because if you substitute those theta as theta hat, it will be easier. Okay. The second one. This uh, this is P P F. The partial f, partial x. What that means is this. Partial f, partial u is, should be, what's the dimension? Uh, the should be 1 by 4, by the 4 by 1. But then you need to say that this. Okay. Oh, well, this way I define this way. Okay. So 1, uh, 0, 0, this, and this. It's partial f, partial x, uh, sorry. Partial f1, partial x, partial f2, partial x, partial f3, partial x. Okay, it's not gradient, it's Jacobian this, this way, all right? So that's my B matrix, but you need to evaluate at the current, the equilibrium, X hat and U hat, okay? So how to do that? that uh, you need to somehow lambda -fy it. Uh, so I will tell them the parameter I use, G, MC is 10, MP is one, I always 0.5. Where did I get these numbers? I didn't, I just copied it from uh, the, no, the URDF I download from the Drake's website. I have to read this URDF file and, uh, and, and read those numbers for me. So this is a card that's uh, mass is 10. That means MC is 10. Okay, the other link is a pole. Mass is one, the MP is one, right? And I can guess what is the, the cylinder. You can see there's a cylinder. Where's the cylinder? Uh, mass, this origin, this is the box, that means the body, all right? Uh, let me be the pole part. Pole part is cylinder, 0. 0.5. The length of the cylinder is 0. 0.5. Anyway, you don't need to worry, I already deciphered this for you. So, um, where's linearization? This is linearization, so I tell them all of these numbers. Of course, there's other numbers. Uh, anyway, those are just substituting those things with the right number, okay? Here, to evaluate this matrix, you need to know all these, what? All these constants, MC, MP, you also need to know theta, right? For example, this guy, you also need to know G, FX, it is okay, FX is U, right? So, I substitute the right things, you, you also need to substitute theta here. I mean, so those are called lambda -fi with this expression, and those are the parameters you want to specify later, you call it, and that's, if you run it, okay, uh, you can see A hat is a number now, it's a matrix, it's a very simple matrix, so that's easy for you to compute. And uh, B hat, it's this. Okay, this is a continuous time A and B, you got it already. Okay, so now what we should do? Now it's back to our textbook. Okay, what we should do? Place poles. Okay, how should we place poles? Uh, that's the pole I placed before. Uh, I don't think that that's a good pole. Anyway, let's say, let's try that. That's negative one or negative two. No, oh, this is even unstable. Uh, negative one. Let's say negative one, okay? At least that's a stable pole. Then I design my gain matrix. All right, that's a gain matrix. I, I think it's my design. Okay, so if I have a full state feedback, so I'm doing the right, uh, simple things. You do the hard thing, right? You don't have the full state feedback, by the way, right? So in this case, if I have a full state feedback, I don't need observer. So my, to implement this, you need first what? To draw the block diagram, right? So this is your card pole, card pole system. I have all the state, why is the whole state? I want well, everything out, okay? And then I directly my negative kx, and this is my u, right? As simple as that. 
Okay, so that should balance it if everything is correct. So let's see it. So then I, um, I already have this, this number. Let's go to the carpal example. Okay, let's clear out every cell. So let's run the first one. I just set up everything. But this one, I need a little bit uh, server, sorry, mascot to, for visualization. And then there's one controller called my controller is just our state feedback controller. Okay, so this is, uh, this is just multiple, there's no state, right? This static output block. And uh, I think I can just run it. Now from this part, what did I do? I think I try different things and they, are, they give me bugs all the time. Let's see which one is correct one. Let me try, hold on. Is this the one we used before? No? Let's use a pole here. Uh, let's use the gain here. Negative 15, 20, uh, we don't have it. Let's see this. Uh, let's copy the design here. Okay, numerically, copy it here. So let's comment this out. So my controller, I, how many block I have? I have two block, right? I have two block. So I first add my controller and it's K. This will be negative K, right? So then I think here I do a negative K. Well, you should keep track of your convention. Otherwise, if the sign of the feedback gain is wrong, then everything will be unstable. Okay, that's somehow, whenever you see behavior, make sure the K should be negative K or K. That depends on your syntax or your notation. But here, I somehow do a negative sign here. Did I? Yes, okay, so, but then, then I need to give K. Uh, <clears throat> then I add, this part is at that plant. This plant is specific, okay, it's a special. It's a multi-body plant, which Jake already handled this by itself. You can read URDF to initially to this plant. So, uh, so you can just copy this. This part is just a thin graph and the plant. It's just two things, one is how it looks, how to visualize it. The other one is that it's almost related to the dynamics. Okay, and uh, I can read this URDF to initialize this carpal system. Then my plant finalize. Now I connect. Plant get state output port. Control get input port. I have full state. Do I? Here, the multi multi body plant. Uh, the Drake has this this block. You can get output port. You can define them, but you can also get the full state out. So that's how the, this is called get state output port. Okay, and the controller get input port. Then the controller get output port. Plant get actuation input port. Some, I mean, this depends on which joint you have control over. It's different, right? We only have one control joint, which is. So here you have two joints. If you like robotics syntax or context, this is two joints. One is prismatic joint, sliding along this line. This is called prismatic joint. Prismatic. Uh, the other one is the revolu joint, the rotate, which is this one. Okay? Which one you have control? Only along this line. Okay, you don't have a control here. If you can't control here, you don't need to balance it. All right, so, <clears throat> uh, so that's the input is actuation input port. Then I want to log out the, uh, the whole full, full pendulum state and I visualize it. I start, see set continuous state, numpy I start with some kind of, uh, let's make it smaller, point to reading away from the upright position. Should be here, right? Uh, this one should be further away. If we design, define this as a positive direction of theta, that should be the case. And I uh, start, uh, 
Let me see whether it works. Uh, yes, that's how it works. It's not fast. You can use LQR to make it a little better. Look at this. That's how it looks here, okay? That's the, okay. If you want to see the convention of uh, frame, you need to make sure pay attention to the frame color code. X is always red, RGB, okay? RGB, this is green, this is Y direction. This is uh, upward is what? It's uh, the Z direction. So if you look at X, if you want X to be this way, that's how it looks here. Otherwise, this way is incorrect, okay, it's here. And uh, point two away from, positive two, point two reading away from the upright position is roughly look like this. And you start simulate, that will be this behavior, okay? To tell you I'm not cheating, let's use another game. Let's say, let's use just negative. Maybe you see something like that. But for some reason, uh, I don't know why, it's that the simulator does not refresh very frequently. So the first part you see maybe the previous simulation. <laughs> um, let's see. So this is wrong. This is not our simulation. If you do that again, that, that's, 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 maybe some of you see this thing, right? It's like a ghost disappear right away. If you go back, you play, right? It's, uh, let's play it again. You see, wow. It's, yeah. All right. So that's a wrong, even just a sign error will cause this, right? It's hard for you to debug sometimes. Okay. Uh, for you, actually you need to do much more than what we need, all right? First of all, let's see, for your example, what do you need? For your case, I somehow try to simplify it, maybe make it more complicated. So you, are, you have a card pole, okay? The first problem is that y equal to x theta, right? What I call x theta is the only thing related to theta. You can only measure theta, you don't measure the uh, absolute x, y, x, x coordinate, okay? You only know theta, this is what? There's a theta and a theta dot. Suppose you measure this, that's the first example. Then you design your feedback gain, right? Um, I think it's just this, right? So that's negative k theta, x theta, I mean, this x theta is division from your upright position. It's not the, the absolute theta. You with me? It should be division from your uh, position. For example, uh, I will send this note to you. You see, the k times is not really a k, right? It's a k times state x minus this upright position, in my case, okay? I hope you can, you can uh, map this to math here, is what? Delta x. Delta x is x, whatever you sense, minus your equilibrium. So whenever I multiply, I decide how much input I need to generate, I need to get this delta x first. Then I multiply by the gain. And here I have a negative sign here. You don't have to have it. Okay. <clears throat> um, any questions? So that's the first example. That's here. That's good enough. In this case, I don't think you can balance to the origin. You, 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 will, you will have a little bit deviate from the origin of x. But it should be balanced. Okay. And the next time I want you to do observer, right? That's even harder. I'm not sure how much, how many of you can finish that part. I don't expect you to finish everything, but I expect you to try and suffer. 
The second one is very important, suffer. The only way you learn is through suffer and direct try again, try again, and suffer, and read book and think. Then your network, your new network in your mind got changed. If you don't suffer, you don't learn. I, I, well, that's true. That has neurology, uh, yeah. Okay, to suffer because you are all kind of adults. The suffering to make your neuro, that's called neuroplasticity, okay? So you can, you can, you can, you can retrain your network and learn the concept, okay? <clears throat> because the way you suffer is trying to connect different information, knowledge you have heard before or learned in this class. You connect them to establish your own understanding and that's the way to learn it, okay? That's fine. Now I want to mention one thing that is, uh, I think, this URDF is not created by myself. I think there's, uh, I did modify this to 91. I think the rotation axis is different from the figure that, uh, all of these are downloaded from uh, Jake's website, by the way. But I think this uh, equation, the equation we are using is also from Ross Tetrick. Uh, the equation we are using is right. But the URDF, the theta in the URDF is actually the other way around. Okay? So I have to change that rotation axis from positive one y axis to negative axis. So everything becomes correct. I think you need to do the similar change. Uh, but I'm not completely sure. I think uh, maybe 95% sure. Okay? I think you should try that first. Or up update this URDF file. The only thing I modified is this, uh, the rotation axis, the theta. Okay. So I have to dive into the detail to see, okay, the theta, the URDF defines is, is really this one. It's, it's this, this theta, this way. Okay? But I'm defining it's the other. We are, we are using this formula. This formula is right. And this is this theta. Because if you think about it, this is my positive x. This is my y as z. Where is my y? It's pointing inward, right? It's pointing inward should be my y. So the rotation is around y should be negative y. If you use your right hand rule, it should be negative y. So that's why uh, I changed the rules to negative y. Uh, I think everything because before I always have this, uh, yeah, the cars disappear right away. No matter how I design it, it's taken me a while to find out this discrepancy. I hope you haven't got this far, so everything should be okay. Any questions? No questions? Let's do one more example. And before doing that example, I want to teach you how to do tracking. All right. The only thing that, that many things useful is not drive everything to zero. You want to track. Uh, it's called servoing, right? No matter what, I want the rotor, sorry, the, the motor to rotate at a, at a desired speed. The current, of whatever I send, the current command, you want that to follow. Those way of design is typically called tracking. And uh, the balancing one is one, all the state of vector to convert to zero. That's only a small portion of the system you will see in reality, okay? What I want to say is that typically I don't go through details of tracking because all the meat are there, okay? All the uh, information or, or concept or knowledge is already covered. But for this particular problem, you need to do a little bit customized analysis, that's it. Let me repeat. So in your future, I think when that, whatever control course you take, or even other class is the same thing, I don't think you can do pattern matching directly solve real world problem by matching it to a textbook problem. If that's the case, I don't think you need a uh, bachelor degree at all, right? You just need to be able to read and have good memory, okay? So you need, really need to understand the concept theory behind it. When you see problem, you not do superficial matching. Okay, this has A, B, C, D. This system doesn't have A, B, C, D. I don't know how to design it. Okay, college is useless. I never learned it, right? But, but 
you should really learn or try to think a little bit further down the conceptual level to see, oh, what I want. Okay, this is a dynamic system. I want to convert to equilibrium, and how do I design a control law to do it? All right. So that's the thing I want to emphasize. So no matter how many special cases I cover, you will see some problem new in reality. But this one, I do want to go through it this time of offering. Uh, just give you an example to see how we can use the things we learned so far to solve a problem maybe you think is, is completely different. Okay. All right. Let's uh, do some theory and then we also do Drake. I don't think we have time to do Drake today. Oh, we have a quiz, right? Okay, let's get started this and then we have a quiz, all right? I think it's fun. You will have a lot of quizzes, so you will, so you will get used to it, okay? So I don't expect you, not, not now quiz, okay, sorry. <laughs> well, later, later, later. Let's finish the checking. Okay, so the tracking problem is covering is a little bit uh, uh, more general than we actually need. So in reality, you have a plant, okay? You have a plant that's maybe linear, okay? That's your Y, and your Y, you want that to follow a reference. Okay, so let's now draw this special form. It's basically your controller says, your controller does the following. So this is your controller input. This is control, and this is output y. You want this y and this uh, r to control, convert to, the, to eventually to, to zero. Their error is zero. And oftentimes, you may also have disturbance. Okay, something you didn't model, something you didn't consider, and you can use uh, uh, disturbance to, to say that's something you cannot control. You want your tracking to be actually robust. Uh, robust to different disturbances even. Of course, if your disturbance is too big or change too rapidly, you wouldn't be able to uh, have a pure zero, but at least you should be able to maintain stability uh, around zero. If your, your aircraft keep by disturbed by uh, turbulence, right? You're, I mean, you're moving around from that equilibrium, but you're not exactly ideally at that particular point, okay? So that's the plant dynamics. So your system update is A plus BK, uh, BUK. This is your U. Uh, but also have some effect from disturbance. Let's not worry about that too much. You can assume this is zero if that's fine. And then your system output is the linear function of your state. So the goal is to design U to make output track a reference, okay? To simplify the discussion, let's assume that you're going to track one thing at a time, right? You have speed, you have something, you cannot have a vector reference. And uh, let's say both R and Y are scalar, and the UK can make full state information. Suppose this guy has full state, this is also here. This is my whole state information is available. If not, if not, we'll design observer. Okay, you see what I mean? If not, you don't have state, you design observer. If system not observable, then you need to change your strategy. Okay, Okay, that's the control diagram. Okay, and uh, let's cover this example, then we stop. Okay, so for example, first of all, uh, I want to say that linear feedback doesn't work. So the way we learned before is always plug in a next to k times x, right? That's how we learn it. In this case, it won't work. Okay, if you plug in this, you will have xk plus one equal to, let's just write here, a minus k times xk. This is our what? What we call this closed loop dynamics. What do, why is closed loop? You plug in your control law already into the system. The system only depends on the state. So in this case, you can see that uh, that's very simple. No matter what k you choose, it won't convert to your, most, most of the time, it won't convert to your desired reference, right? So, so in this case, if everything scalar is very easy. So if a minus k is bigger than one, 
what will happen? Unstable. So then your yk is just your xk will diverge to infinity. Okay? If this guy is less than one, that's typically what we want, right? Then our yk is xk. In this case, it's just a simple example. It will convert to zero. Right? So it's the only possible so-called equilibrium of this system is either eventually convert to divert to um, uh, infinity or convert to zero. Okay? Uh, there's a special case is if this guy is equal to one. Some people may argue this may say, that's valid. Okay, you have a trivial system that does not move. So that means x k plus one, oh, sorry, equal to one, that means uh, it's always, you will say yk is, is just plus minus x zero. So xk, I mean, depending on if it's negative one or positive one, right? So <laughs> it's either always uh, x zero or negative, or positive, negative, positive, keep alternating between these uh, things. So it doesn't work. That's all I want you to know. If you just plug in this thing. So we need to do some change of variable, redefine things so that we can, all we want is what? The tracking error to convert to zero. Right? We need to include that somehow into our state so that everything will be fine. So that will be covered next time. So we now start with our quiz, okay. Okay, so the tracking problem I'm covering is a little bit uh, uh, more general than we actually need. So in reality, you have a plant, okay? You have a plant that's maybe linear, okay? That's your y, and your y, you want that to follow a reference. Okay, so let's now draw this special form. It's basically your controller says, your controller does the following. So this is your controller input. This is control, and this is output y. You want this y and this uh, r to control, convert to the, to eventually to, to zero. Their error is zero. And oftentimes, you may also have disturbance. Okay, something you didn't model, something you didn't consider, and you can use uh, uh, disturbance to, to say that something you cannot control. You want your tracking to be actually robust. Uh, robust to different disturbances even. Of course, if your disturbance is too big or change too rapidly, you wouldn't be able to uh, have a pure zero, but at least you should be able to maintain stability uh, around zero. If your, your aircraft keep by disturbed by uh, turbulence, right? You're, I mean, you're moving around from that equilibrium, but you're not exactly ideally at that particular point, okay? So that's the plant dynamics. So our system update is A plus BK, uh, BUK. This is your U. Uh, but also have some effect from disturbance. Let's not worry about that too much. You can assume this is zero if that's fine. And then your system output is the linear function of your state. So the goal is to design U to make output track reference, okay? To simplify the discussion, let's assume that you're going to track one thing at a time, right? You have speed, you have something, you can now have a vector reference. And uh, let's say both R and Y are scalar, and the UK can make full state information. Suppose this guy has full state, this is also here. This is my whole state information is available. If not, if not, we'll design observer. Okay, you see what I mean? If not, you don't have state, you design observer. If system not observable, then you need to change your strategy. Okay, Okay, that's the control diagram. Okay, and uh, let's cover this example, then we stop. Okay, so for example, first of all, uh, I want to say that linear feedback doesn't work. So the way we learned before is always plug in a negative k times x, right? That's how we learn it. In this case, it won't work. 
Okay, if you plug in this, you will have xk plus one equal to, let's just write here, a minus k times xk. This is our what? What we call this closed loop dynamics. What do, why is closed loop? You plug in your control law already into the system. The system only depends on the state. So in this case, you can see that uh, that's very simple. No matter what k you choose, it won't converge to your, most, most of the time it won't convert to your desired reference, right? So, so in this case, if everything scalar is very easy, so if a minus k is bigger than one, what will happen? Unstable. So then your yk is just your xk will diverge to infinity. Okay, if this guy is less than one, that's typically what we want, right? Then our yk is xk. In this case, it's just a simple example. It will convert to zero, right? So it's the only possible so-called equilibrium of this system is either you eventually convert to diverge to um, uh, infinity or convert to zero, okay? Uh, there's there's a special case is if this guy is equal to one. Some people may argue this may say, that's valid, okay? You have a trivial system that does not move. So that means x k plus one, oh, sorry, equal to one. That means uh, is always, you will say y k is, is just plus minus x zero. So x k, I mean, depending on if it's negative one or positive one, right? So it's either always uh, x zero or negative, or positive, negative, positive, we keep alternating between these uh, things. So it doesn't work. That's all I want you to know if you just plug in this thing. So we need to do some change of variable, redefine things so that we can, all we want is what? The tracking error to convert to zero. Right. We need to include that somehow into our state so that everything will be fine. So that will be covered next time. So we now start with our quiz, okay. So, so far we have learned how to design state feedback controllers, okay, in a linear form, in the sense that all the U, typically the regulation The, let's see. Okay. So from regulation, uh, actually to tracking. So regulation problem is trying to make the state convert to zero. As I mentioned to you before, this is, uh, you should think about not something to zero, it's something to a desired value. That value is, uh, it's, uh, you can define the coordinate, origin of the coordinate system so that the desired value is your zero. Okay, but for the card balancing example, that is a perfect example for regulation problems. Okay, but for many problems you have seen in real life and you want the motor to, to have a desired speed and the speed may change, right? Your command speed may change over its time. You have to track a given reference signal even when you drive a car, you want your car, it's called what? Uh, auto cruise, okay, cruise control. You want your car to travel at 70 miles per hour and that's, and you keep changing that thing, you want to track that, all right? You don't want everything to convert to zero. And how we, how to use the techno, uh, the method we learned so far in this class to design tracking control, uh, it's the topic I'm not going to discuss uh, today. Okay, it's almost like a new thing, but, but you have learned all the fundamentals to do this now, all right? Fundamentally, nothing new, it's just a new application. Okay, let's see the setup. I think we briefly discussed this setup last time. So the setup is that we have A, B, C, D. Uh, for simplicity, I'm not going to include D term, okay? There's no direct feed through, and and also, we add one more term to make the framework 
more challenging than the basic version. So I allow my system to have some disturbance. And disturbance is, is I think it's almost everywhere when you do a real kind of uh, control and your model must be, as I mentioned before, all models are wrong, right? Your model won't be exactly correct, okay? So this term basically take account of all the other things that you don't, it's uncertainty and also something you don't have control over. Okay, our goal is that we want to design this U to track a given reference signal, okay, RK. That's our goal, and this RK may not be zero. Right? So as I mentioned before last time, and the state feedback that we learned so far for which the control is nothing but again time to state, this does not work. Okay, we give example for the simplest, simplest case for a, a scalar system, a simple scalar system. And if this case, I can derive it, the closed loop system, I know the three cases, and we know either diverge or convert to zero or state, stay uh, positive or negative of the initial state. Okay, it won't track the reference signal, okay? In order for you to track reference signal, you cannot have this form of control. You have to have some, somehow a, a kind of a constant input to keep exciting the system to make sure the output uh, tracks the desired uh, reference. Okay, let's work on this case. Let's say, um, for example, let's not stick to this simple linear case. Let's allow it to be a non-zero constant independent of state. Okay, almost like I'm inverting the system. Let's see how it works. For example, um, I know the state is of this form. Okay, the state trajectory, that's the solution. If you have reviewed for your home, uh, for, your, for the midterm, you should be familiar with this uh, formula. Okay, this is a scalar case. That's why I have a little a instead of a capital A here. Okay, and from your high school math, okay, what you have learned, you, you must have learned this uh, partial sum formula, right? And let's call it, so it's j from zero to k minus one, a raised to the power k minus one minus j. If you just write out all the terms, you can see that when j is k minus one, this is one, okay? I'm, I'm listing term backward, okay, from the largest j. And when j is k minus two, then this is plus a, okay? When j is minus two, that's that. And you can do this, keep increasing this. Eventually, when j is zero, you got this is k minus one, okay? You have this uh, summation of this power series, okay? Okay. Um, so you know the formula for this is nothing but a minus a, k minus one times a, which is k, divided by one minus a. That's the partial sum formula. And uh, you know as k goes to infinity, this will uh, convert to uh, if a normalizes one, for example, then there will be one over a, okay? So you keep adding terms up to k, and if k is really large or is diver uh, it goes to infinity, then the sum will convert to this number. Okay, so, so, so in this case, suppose the norm of A is less than one, then I have my, if I assume that the, uh, uh, let me write down the formula first. So this is A raised to the power K, X zero, plus summation A uh, K minus J minus one times U of J. Okay, now let's assume, assume my uj is constant, okay? It doesn't change. Okay, let's fix a number of u. Okay, so then I will find out this will be 
eventually, as k as k go to infinity, this will be one divided by one minus a times u hat. Okay, if this is a constant, right? And what as k goes to infinity, this term will convert to zero. Okay, and uh, so if we want, let's say we want to track, right? We want to have one divided by a u hat equal to what? In this case, my y is just a state, okay? Equals to r, I want to track this number r. Suppose r doesn't change. So then I can find u hat equal to r times one minus a, okay? In this very, very special case, if I keep, suppose the system is stable, a is less than one, all right? If I just, I just let u equal to r times one minus a, then the system eventually converts to r. Okay? Under the condition that the system has to be stable. Right? If the non-stable is unstable, then it won't convert to a constant. Okay, it will diverge. So we somehow solve this problem under a lot of uh, assumptions. Okay, what assumption we made? A scalar, first of all, okay, and we know this R, and it doesn't change, okay, and we don't allow U to change at all. So we cannot, we can make sure that it converts, but we cannot somehow uh, have a control over the transient, right? We can only know it convert to R, we don't, we cannot control it to make it convert faster or less overshoot, things like that. Okay, so those are the, all the problems, and uh, but just give you a sense that we can indeed make things, make this thing track a given reference. If you tell me r ahead of time, I can tell what constant you can give you that r if the system is stable. Let me repeat. Whatever reference you ask me to track, if you tell me ahead of time, I can compute if the system is stable, I can compute a constant input to make sure your system eventually converts to that constant. Okay, that's the thing. Okay, it's, it's doable. All right, can we do it better? That's what I'm asking, or in a more formal way. Okay, so the challenge is to really generalize what we have done on the last slide to the more general tracking problem that we considered before is that ISK is not a scalar. We cannot use the, those partial sum formula that easily, okay? And the system may be unstable. Here, we assume the system is stable, right? But if the system I gave you is unstable, doesn't mean you cannot make it stable, right? Doesn't mean you cannot design a control law to track a given reference. So the, the previous way of inverting the system in this very simple setup will not be uh, that helpful anymore, okay? And also this RK may not know ahead of time, okay? You know, you may know it doesn't change, but you don't know, when you design your controller, when you program your chip, you don't know what the R will be, right? So that's also a, another issue. And we may also have unknown disturbances, okay? All of this, can be addressed after a little bit change of variables, and we can design tracking controller that address all of these challenges in the sense that we can make it work for state vector, not a scalar state, and uh, give an unknown reference and unknown disturbance. Okay, so let's see how it can be done. Let's just do this, okay. Let's introduce a so-called integral state. Uh -huh. you, have, you all know PI control, right? Or have heard of this, right? Let's just take that idea. Let's just introduce a integral state. What does integral state mean? It's the summation of, uh, it's keep summing up. It's a scalar, I'll call this, this is nothing but a scalar that sum of all past 
checking error. Okay, I accumulate all the tracking error. Okay, and uh, this will be my tracking error. Tracking error. Uh, sometime I will call it E of k, which is R k minus Y k. So this is your measurement. This is the reference you want to track. Okay, a uh, simple fact. I want. I hope that's clear from the definition. Um, <clears throat> if zk as it converts to a constant z star. Suppose this is a constant. In other words, if this zk doesn't change eventually, I'm not asking it to convert to zero, okay? It, is, it won't be possible. If it doesn't change, that means what? zk plus one equal to zk eventually, right? When you keep updating, it doesn't change anymore. That means uh, RK minus YK convert to zero. Okay, let me not write this way. So, so if as long as this integral state doesn't change, stay at a constant, then the error will be zero or convert to zero. As long as you have a non-zero error, this integral state will keep changing, right? You, you with me? Whenever this guy is non-zero, you will keep modifying the integral state, of course. Either increase or decrease, whatever. I'm not putting absolute error, okay? It's just, it could be positive or negative. But no matter what, as long as this term is non-zero, the integral term is keep changing. So, so if I can convert, okay, I can make sure that the integral state eventually convert to some constant, then I already guarantee the tracking error will convert to zero. Okay, that's the fact, uh, by clear from the definition. Okay, so to use the tools we learn in this class, of course you can use the classical control to design this as well. But to enable you to think everything in terms of state space and modern control tools, and let's just the extend the state. Okay, let's have an extended state space which include. Um, this is x, this x is rm, okay? And this integral is r, it's a scalar. So overall, you have a rm plus one state vector. Suppose we are trying to track one thing, you have one dimensional integral state. I'm claiming that in this extended state space, if I design a state feedback controller, then everything will be okay. Okay, the same design thing we have learned. We just need to include one more term, which is the integral state. Let's see how it works. This is not a unique solution, okay? This is one way to do this track and control design. Okay, so suppose my feedback law is this. Okay, it's again times this. Uh, any questions? Yes, you saw? Z star is a constant. That's, uh, eventually it doesn't change, I call that number Z star. Suppose this is our Z, K, and this is K, oh, sorry. Uh, this is K, and suppose this thing eventually converts to that constant, I call this constant Z star. All right, as long as it doesn't change, I call that constant z star. Okay, uh, <clears throat> this uk may be, uh, let's say this is our, our notation is rm, right? We are not uh, constraining ourselves to a scalar case. The u can be what? Multiple input. But the output for now, let's consider this one. We want that output to track. For example, the velocity or the rotor speed, things like that. Okay, so this vector is Rn plus one. So this game matrix will be Rm by n plus one. Okay, so this whole thing, right, will be that. So this, if you write down this, uh, if you write all this term will be Kx, it's almost like a state feedback term. 
okay, in the original state, plus kz, the integral term, is like this. This is the original feedback term. If you don't add this term, if kz is zero, that's the state feedback, and you can now track. But as long as you include this term, everything should work out. At least there, uh, if the system is, uh, well, it depends on other conditions. Um, if, this, if you can design a controller to track it in this way, most of the time, you should be able to find that controller. Okay, so I would like you to um, now find out the closed loop dynamics for X tutor. Okay, so this X tutor, K plus one, is X K plus one, ZK plus one, right? Which is XK plus one is AXK, BUK plus what? BD. DK, okay, that's disturbance. We make it more general now. ZK plus one is what we introduced. It's the um, sum of the past, so there will be ZK plus RK minus uh, YK, YK, yeah, let's just use that. YK is, uh, let's use state, right? YK is C times XK, okay? And if you write down everything in the matrix form, that will be A zero times X K Z K, okay? Because that's this term, okay? And uh, uh, the second row is Z K, right? So that will be, and the, here there is a, a negative C times X K, so this is negative C times one, all right? So that's, everything related to state. The state are everything that possibly depend on X and Z, these three terms. All the other terms are external things. Anyway, you can write it out. Eventually, it will become this formula. Okay. Um, I'm not going to write everything out, but I assume you can handle this very, fairly easily. Let's give it uh, several names. This will call A tutor. All right, this guy, I will call that the B tutor. And the uh, whole thing here is my beta K, okay? So it's almost like I have an extended state space. I have A tilde times X tilde K plus B tilde UK plus some kinds of things that I have no control over. All right, some terms depend on disturbance. I know or I may or may not know even, all right? And some depend on the reference. I don't know when I design the controller. Okay, it only, I can only observe it or measure it when the controller start running, I see the reference coming out, okay? So this I call the whole thing beta. And uh, <clears throat> under some mild conditions, let's assume, okay, A tilde, B tilde is controllable. Do you know how to check it's controllable? Controllability matrix, right? Yeah, the rank of controllability matrix equals to the state dimension, N, okay? So if A tutor, B tutor is controllable, we can design K tutor such that A tutor plus B tutor, K tutor has desired angle values. All right, has desired angle values. Okay, so Let's say we have already defined some k. Let's pick some angle values. Suppose it's stable, right? Then the closed loop dynamics is no longer just a plus b k times x. It has some additional term. Okay, it has additional terms, and I'm going to claim that now for constant or slowly changing d k or r k. I don't care what they are. I don't know what they are. 
my state, but my, my tracking error always convert to zero. Okay, that's my claim. Let me repeat that again. So when I design this K, I have no knowledge of this DK and RK. I don't know them, right? My design of K does not depend on RK and the DK. This is different from here, my design of my control constant depends on R, right? Now, uh, I just say, I, if you tell me A, B, A tilde, B tilde, A tilde, B tilde has nothing to do with R and D, right? It doesn't, I don't need to know R, I don't need to know D at all, okay? But if I place the A tilde plus B K, B tilde, K tilde, has some desired stable angle values, then eventually my tracking error convert to zero and the arbitrary constant disturbance or reference. No matter what that reference is, you won't be able to, uh, we will eventually convert to zero, okay? Of course, if you are, if you keep changing your reference, of course, you wouldn't be able to perfect track it, right? You need some time to track that uh, given reference. You wouldn't be reasonable to ask your controller to track arbitrary fast varying reference, okay? The only thing you can guarantee is when the reference doesn't change or slowly change, you can somehow converge to that given reference, okay? And that is exactly the same kind of formulation or uh, arguments like what we done before, like this case, like this case, you can prove my statement here, okay? Let's see how we can, I'm, I'm going to just briefly uh, argue through this. Let's suppose, suppose K tilde is chosen such that Well, depending on who you are, you may like different eigenvalue pairs. But in this case, let's just assume the basic. At least we need a closed loop, which is A tilde plus B tilde, K tilde, right? Is stable, okay? In this free time case. That means all the eigenvalues lies strictly inside the unit circle. That's all I'm assuming, right? That's all I'm assuming. Then, <clears throat> then can you tell me first? Then, first, I'm going to claim the closed loop a to the raised power k convert to zero. Do you agree with me or not? Why? Can you prove it for me? Yeah, you can use Jordan decomposition. That's the most general case. I also mentioned that, right? You can think if that's, uh, if you want to simplify the discussion, you can think it is diagonalizable. Of course, all the angle values is less than one. So you keep multiplying by itself will convert to zero. Okay, that's a fact for all stable system. Second claim I'm going to claim is that Let's look at uh, the solution, first of all, okay? So closed root dynamics, I want to analyze its behavior as k goes to infinity. Let's write down its solution. So the solution is a, a closed loop with power k times x tilde zero. That's the zero input state response. Plus zero state response, which is a convolution type of uh, formula, j from zero, k minus one, the same formula, right? Is a tilde, k minus one minus j, b tilde, times what? So typically, when, when, we, when we design our controller before, we don't have this term anymore, right? It's closed loop, but doesn't have any other things, because you plug in the control, that's it. But now, after closing the loop, I still have something, I can view this something as my new input, okay? So that will be my B tilde, B, it doesn't have anything, right? It's just this term. Let's just call it beta K. 
Say that again. Yeah, a closed loop, sorry. And B, J. Are you with me? Well, there's nothing new. I'm just, is this notation a little bit messier than before? Nothing new. Okay, that's my state trajectory. And I know this term convert to zero if I place my eigenvalue stable, right? Now I'm trying to make sure this guy has some of these properties, and I'm going to argue if you want to make it like this one, like you solve solve for what you need, then you are getting into trouble because you need to know something before you can solve it, right? But here I just need to argue that uh, <clears throat> I will say summation j from zero to k minus one, a k minus one minus j as closed loop times beta of j. This guy, uh, let's write it out, okay? It's nothing but like we did before in the, in the matrix case. The first term is, let's assume, let's say, sorry. Uh, let's say beta j is approximate beta bar. So the disturbance and the reference doesn't change. Okay, it's a constant, but I don't know it. Okay, whatever it is, it's a constant. Suppose that's always beta bar. Then what we have is the first term is I times beta bar. Okay, the second term when J is K minus one is I times beta bar. Then it's A closed loop tilde times beta bar all the way to uh, a closed loop tilde k minus one times beta bar. Okay, so this is nothing but I plus a closed loop tilde all the way to a closed loop k minus one whole thing times beta bar. Okay, I'm claiming this guy will eventually converge as k go to infinity some constant times beta bar, this is some constant. I don't care what that constant is, but I know there's a constant. Constant means what? Doesn't change over time. Constant doesn't mean it's a scalar, it's a vector, a matrix. It only means it, it's constant, right? It doesn't change over time. Okay, as long as the second claim holds, then we're done. Okay, but let's first look at how we can do this. This is the same thing, actually. You can view this as one plus a plus all the way to a minus k minus one. You can think as if that's the case, if that can help you. Okay, I'm sorry, I cannot write like this. I, I, you can think as if that's the case, right? Uh, <clears throat> so I don't think we need proof. I think that's pretty clear, so C, C is nothing but what? I plus a closed loop tilde plus a closed loop tilde squared all the way to what? Infinity. That's C. If this power theory is sum converse, that will be C. If diverse, it won't be, right? Let's call it one. Uh, let's, I have too many ones. Let's call it I, this kind of one, right? And uh, 你们也都学过吧,在等比数列到时候算的时候 uh, Let's multiply A closed loop tilde times C Okay And then you have A closed loop tilde Plus A closed loop tilde squared Plus all the way, right? That's what? That's 2, let's call it 2, right? And I minus two gives you what? One minus A closed loop tilde times C. Here, what's the difference between these two terms? Two sum. This guy, right? The only difference of these two theories, it's all have infinite terms. Right? Suppose they converge, then 
that will be my identity. So C will be I minus a closed loop clear inverse. That's it. The only assumption we made is that this sum converge. That can also be proved if you A meet A closed loop is stable, and you assume it's diagonalizable, for example. That's the same case as, as what? As this term converge. It's exactly the same as this term converge. Because all the diagonal entries add up together, that's the case, right? Uh, <clears throat> okay. So now I, I have the second claim proved. So, so what? So I know my xk cuta, which is xk zk, right? Will converge to what? Will converge to? This term convert to zero. This term converts to constant times beta hat beta bar, right? So they will converge to C times beta bar. Based on my notation defined above, that it has to be that, right? So both of them doesn't change, and I don't care what exactly this number is. Okay, so I know ZK will converge to a constant, okay? Both, actually both of them will converge to some constant, okay? ZK convert to some constant. This is some constant. So, as my argument, as I, as I mentioned before, then so that means EK convert to zero, if you remember. Okay. So typically, when you want to track something, you want to add an integral term, okay? Uh, so we'll always make you be able to track a little bit more challenging cases than without defining or introducing the integral state. Any questions? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, hey, Pyuta, uh-huh. Say that again. You你说这这一项，这一项吗？我们呃，k已经到无穷了。啊，这我我说k当k趋于无穷的时候，这次到这儿吗？这两个都有无，这两项都有无穷term。k很大嘛，k可以可以可以go to infinity，right？ 对对对对对 ，finite is fine as well. You can then you have something depend on k as k go to infinity. That term convert to zero as well. Okay. C is something is add to infinity term. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No questions. Let's move on to the example. This model speed tracking control is not the same as inverted pendulum. Now I want you to track a given speed. And uh, I think we have a homework. This one, right? We have a homework before. Let's use this PC motor model, not the one I gave in lecture notes. So that's also <laughs> serve as a purpose to go over this homework example again so that you have a better understanding how you should approach this problem. Okay, let's use this example. Okay, so uh, 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 maybe this, this is fine. Let's not use that. Uh, let's copy down this, uh, directly copy down the DC motor. Where is it? Let's directly use this DC motor uh, transfer function, okay? Let's see how it works. Uh, <clears throat> let's say motor tracking example.
Okay, let's say my motor transfer function is what? It's zero, zero, uh, 0.2. Okay, let's say zero, zero, point, zero, point zero, zero, 0.002 Z plus 0 0.00164. I multiply things out already, okay? Z squared minus 1.52 times Z plus 0.55, sorry, 0.552. Okay, it's a lot of numerical things. Uh, <clears throat> so this is my motor. So this is my U and uh, my motor, DC motor. And this is my y. Okay, that's my model. That's my transfer function model, right? And first of all, if I want to design things, the tracking example, uh, we need to have a state space model, right? So <clears throat> let's first find state space model. Okay. In lecture note two, we gave a formula, right? So you, you just need to make sure your treasure function satisfies or you change that to the canonical form of the transfer function so that you can write down the state space form. Uh, do you still remember what it is? Let's uh, derive it for you, okay? So that makes sure you don't copy the formula you want to understand it. And there's a trick to do this, and uh, maybe that's why I didn't cover it the first time. I don't like tricks, all right, but uh, somehow you need to know there's, uh, <laughs> there's a way to derive it, okay. Let's derive it. Uh, first of all, let's say uh, hz equal to, let's divide everything by z squared, okay, that will be 0 0.02. Uh, z minus plus 0 0.00164 z minus 2, okay? And this is 1 minus 152 z inverse plus 0 0.552 z negative 2, all right? That's my transfer function, the same thing. I just divide everything by that. And I introduce the intermediate thing function, let's call it P of Z, P of Z. It's a polynomial of Z, it's an intermediate variable, okay? I, I introduce a zhongjian bian liang, okay? Intermediate variable, okay? Do you know what P is? I don't care, all right? It's some kind of polynomial, I can multiply them. And I also know this guy equal to what? YZ divided by UZ. The transfer function of upper signal divided by the transfer function, sorry, uh, not trans, Z transform of the output signal divided by the Z transform of the input signal. Okay. So overall, I will have YZ equal to this thing times PZ. Okay. I will say uh, this guy times PZ. This is all called the numerator. That's called NZ times PZ. This I call DZ times PZ. So this is NZ times PZ. Okay. Now I'm moving to inverse Z transform, time domain, to time domain. What we have is, um, you can see, yk, you can think about it, yz equal to this z inverse times pz. So that means yk equal to 0 0.002 times delay, which is pk minus 1. All right, and the second one is 0 0.0164 pk minus 2. Okay. Similarly, we can have uz equal to uh, dz times pz, the same pz. Okay, so 
inversely transform, I will in time domain to time domain, I will have uk equal to pk. This term, pk, no delay, right? And minus 1.52 uh, pk minus 1, one time delay, plus 2 uh, pk minus 2. Any questions? When we do transfer function, everything has zero initial state. Okay, so z inverse means one step time delay. All right. So are you with me? So somehow I relate input output not directly, but through a intermediate variable p signal. Right. So now I'm going to introduce my state. Vector, let xk equal to, uh, sorry, x1k equal to pk minus 1. Can we do it? Of course. Okay, x2k equal to pk minus 2. Oh, sorry, uh, 1k is this, pk minus 2, and x2k, pk minus 1. The previous definitions worked as well, but uh, this one will align with the formula I gave you. Huh? No, no, no. I just uh, I I can define any way I want. Now I define this way. Okay. You can you may not like the way I define, but I'm following everything. It's right, right? I can do it. I have all the freedom to do it. Okay. If I do this way, then my x state update, okay? xk plus 1, the vector will be x1k plus 1, x2k plus 1. And the first one is what? x1k plus 1 is pk minus 1. Which is x2k. So this is 0, 1 times x2 of k, x1 of k, okay? The second row, then I have some non-trivial things. X2k plus 1, that's this, right? Become pk. Okay, that's become pk. pk from here. So you can see that pk equal to, if you move everything else to the left, that's uh, 25. Uh, or you move to the left, that will become negative, right? So that will be negative 0 0.55, uh, 0 0.552 pk minus 2 plus 1.52 pk minus 1 and plus uk. Any questions? I just move these two terms to the left. I didn't do anything else. Okay, so pk is x2k plus 1. Any questions back there? Okay, pk is, uh, sorry, x2k plus 1 is pk, which is this, that is negative 0.55, sorry, 552 times x1. This is 1.52 x2. And one more term. UK, okay. So that will be my A, this is my B. What about my C? YK is, you already have it, okay? That's nothing but, but I need to rearrange it, right? This is my X1, right? So this is point uh, zero zero one sixty four. Uh, 0 0.2 times xk. Okay, there's no d here, so this is my c. This should be the same as your solution in your homework, but you may just use the formula I gave you, but now I derive it for you. Okay, so what's the meaning of, some people cares about, what's the meaning of this x1 and x2? 
Meaning is here, okay? What's the meaning of P? It's up to you, right? The only input output has meaning, right? Those intermediate variables, of course, it, it, it somehow relate to Y and U, and its exact physical meaning is not certain. But they allow you to define uh, the state space form. Okay, now we have the state space form. And we'll, we'll take a break and then we'll come back to see how we can design tracking controller. Now we have the motor model, that's my motor. And I have the A, B, C, D matrix, right? That's my state space model, okay? This is my U, this is my Y. And uh, if you look at our homework, then I have a PI control to track it. I think all of you have find some KP and KI to, to make the tracking error convert to zero. Did you? Yes, right? So it won't be hard, uh, but you don't know, it's just tuning, right? It's not systematic design, it's just tuning, right? But it can be uh, taking a lot of effort, it can take a lot of effort for you to find a good PI control games, okay? So, <clears throat> so what, let's draw this, this diagram. This is my Y, and uh, this is my, let's say, R reference. This is the error, this is I, this is, will be my error K, and uh, this part is the KP, eventually, come here, and this is KI. Goes here, so overall, <coughs> the, this is my YK. Overall, we have this block. If you look at input output, I don't care how complicated internal block is, so this is my PI control, controller. Okay, so this is my integrator, discrete time, DT integrator. And times KI, right? So uh, I gave a form, I think this form, the, in the example, this is the form, right? Uh, let me just copy that down, that's one form, that's will be this block, it's a ki times point zero point five divided by one minus z inverse. So it's one minus z inverse. This is a discrete time integrator times the gain ki. All right? And you may see other integrator, which is like uh, uh, for example, ki times t, uh, z minus one. These two are the same or not? Let's say this guy is almost like ki times t, t is sampling time, okay? Do you know why this is the case? Z inverse. If you multiply by z, then there will be z minus one, z. Both are right, okay? These are both right. Both correct. So they represent backward or forward Euler approximation of integral, okay? These both are correct. For now, today I'm going to choose a different one, this one, and I'm gonna tell you when you can make the other one, all right? So, <clears throat> now I want to cover everything so that you don't have any question mark in your mind. So I'm going to derive this one for you, okay? Why this is a discrete time uh, integrator. Uh, let's call it, let's define. Suppose your, your system is continuous, right? And your discrete time integrated out. So let's define our state, just one dimensional state, uh, of the integrator is sk equal to integral from zero to k times something time, e of t, and the error keep coming, right? It's continuously coming in the error. So this term keeps sending to this block, and I'm doing this d 
dt. Do you understand what I'm saying? So at any discrete time index k, x means the total integral of the past error accumulated to k times the something time t. Does this make sense to you? Okay, so, uh, what's going on? So what we have is, now I have xk plus one. It's this guy, which is xk plus k times t, k plus one times t, e of t dt. Is that true? Right, okay. All right, then I have a, a two choice to approximate this because my discrete time, your, your computer can only sample at different time steps, right? It doesn't know what's going on in between. You can either assume the sampling time is small enough, the signal in between doesn't change that much, right? You can either use, let's say this is my, this is my error, right? <laughs> This is my error, okay? This is my t, okay? This is uh, the time dot the t. You can, when you do integral, you can either use this, this number, this number, or, or the middle point, okay? There's approximate, I mean, this called whatever, forward, uh, backward, or whatever, approximation. Okay, let's assume we are using the, uh, this guy, so let's make it more convenient. Okay, that will be e times k, e at k times t, this at the beginning of the period, okay? Times, suppose it doesn't change in between times t. Okay? So, so eventually we have xk plus one equal to xk plus t times e of k. Suppose my e of k means e, the, the error signal at the time, k times the sampling time. And my yk equals to, it is a pi controller, it's the gain times the integral state, which is, this is the integral, right? So it times xk. Okay. So now I have a time domain formula for, for what? For, for the, uh, what? The PI control, the I control part, okay? So I have my A matrix in this case, it's, if you view this as a state space model, this is one, B is T, C is KI, D is zero, okay? If you do this transfer function for this guy, what you got is HZ, equal to C, Z, I minus A inverse B plus D, right? That you should remember for your midterm. What is, this is KI times one divided by Z minus one times T, B is T. So this will be our KI times sampling time Z minus one. That's one way you can move back and forth between the time domain relation of the integrator block, this block, and its uh, transfer function, okay? All right, uh, but this is different from the one we gave in the homework, okay? So that one means you use, if I use this guy as uh, ek plus one times t, then I got the other one. Okay, either way is right, it's up to you. So I'm not going to talk about that because notation-wise, it's a little bit more complicated than this version. I will use this guy. Are you with me? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is that, okay, I'm using Drake to test. Let's say test this in Drake. How many blocks we have? One, two. Let's call this pi a block. What's the input to the pi block? R and Y, the output is U. Now what's the relation of the output with respect to this? Uh, 
I think it's uh, u is, uh, let's call it u is, so, so this block, let's say the PI block, let's call it PI block, it's a dynamical system, right? It has its own state, k plus one is xk plus t times ek, which is r k minus yk. Okay, and my yk is ki plus times xk plus kp times what? rk minus yk. So this has a non-trivial d term here. Depends on, I mean, the output depends on immediately the input. This is exactly the PI block. As simple as this, a one-dimensional state space form. Are you with me? Okay, so let's see how we can uh, test it using uh, Drake. Let's get back to Drake a little bit so you see what's going on. I assume you are very familiar, more familiar than, than me, right? Uh, <coughs> simulation in Drake, example continuous time system, still Yuntian system. I, let's skip that part. Uh, uh, that's a lecture four. Let's do this. This is the our A B C D matrix for the motor. Is this true? Let's check. Zero one those numbers, and this is C. Okay, so that's where at zero one those numbers, and uh, this is C matrix, right? Those are my motor A B C D. I somehow copy it because I <laughs> I don't want to type all the D T motor, so I copy. They are the same. Okay, and uh, I. I want to check whether this somehow gave me the same transfer function. It's just for checking purpose. I, I use the control package. So I run this. Uh, I have defined the state space form. I do a state space transfer function. If you want to see that, then I can print uh, DT motor, motor transfer function. Okay, that's my transfer function. That's the control package gave me. That's exactly where we start. Okay, the only thing it says is that our derivation here, we start from this, right? That's where we start from. We derive a, as I mentioned, there's, a, it's a, there's no unique answer, right? And I derive one version of state space matrices to give me this transfer function. Okay, that's exactly the transfer function. I was trying to match which. Okay, um, that's done. Then, um, as I mentioned, then I need to define my uh, PI control. And this is a block. Let's remember you from here. The input is one, uh, hold on, I don't think that's right. Uh, anyway, this is right. Output is ki times the integral state plus kp times error. Okay, the error was computed based on the reference and the input uh, and the output measurement. The way I define it is a discrete time system. Okay, dt is called a pi. Says um, how many state I have? One, right? Uh, so its state dimension is one. Right, that's the only, the integral part has a state, okay? And uh, I can specify my KP, KI through the uh, construction or initialization function. Then I will say how many port I have, this block. This block I have, as I mentioned, have two inputs. One is reference, the other one is output measurement from the plant. Uh, so I have declared input port, it's called reference, the other one I call the motor output Y. Both of them are 1D, okay? And declare vector output PI controller Y will be the input to my motor, by the way. So <clears throat> number of output is what? Uh, is also one, okay? 
number of the one number of disk time state is one, and the periodic discrete update is dt, and I keep this dt here. This dt is my t here, okay, it's my t. Um, then I need to do state update. My update is xk plus t times rk minus yk. So I have x, which is my state. This is r, is the input zero. Y is my input one. Okay, so x next is x times, this is capital T times R minus Y. Once you write everything out on paper, then typing in into Python is just labor work. You don't need to even think that much if you are familiar with uh, what you're trying to do, okay? And calculate output, then my output is what? Ki times xk, so it's uh, ki times x, which is xk, and kp times r minus y. Exactly the formula we wrote down on the paper. Okay, let's call, let's define it, then it's done. Now I give some numbers, and I set up the block diagrams, and uh, <laughs> does it look very simple to you now, right? You add a motor, the motor is what? I call it motor A, B, C, D. That's a linear system. Control B, okay, good. Uh, this is my, uh, mo and DT, right? So it will be a discrete time linear system. That's where we define this motor discrete time system, this A, B, C, D, okay? And then uh, I do a builder connect PI output to motor input and the step response, that's my reference. That's the reference to the PI input zero. So if I change my step response, this is my reference. My reference is one here, okay? So I want to track one. And uh, the motor get output port, the Y will send to, that means this, this link, okay? The Y will be the second input to the PI controller. Then I log out, I want to put a scope to monitor the output. Then I start a simula simulations. I set all the state initially to zero and advance it. I will run it. Ah, that's my PI control. Stable or not? Stable, yes. But it's not that stable, right? We want to convert faster. So how would you tune this PI gain? You can pick a number. Uh, 20, KI. 20 KI. What about KP? Let's see this. Let's see this first. Converts to one, but looks pretty slow, right? Now we are getting this business of tuning. You guys are like this, right? Just tune, tune, see, and that's doesn't need to think. It's very Simple, but sometimes frustrating. How do, I mean, can you, let's try another one. I don't know what works, by the way. Let's see this. Oh, is that what we did before? Uh, it looks this. Uh, let's see this, uh, let's change the reference too. Does this change the nature? No, no but you should actually, if I track zero, zero steady state error, it should go to two, right? It goes to two eventually, but the changing response is still the same. Okay. Uh, so how did you find a good gain? Maybe your homework, that way of integrator is a little bit easier for, for you to find good ones. Can we do 2,000? No? Then the 100 may be better. Oh, it looks better than before, right? Okay. We can tune this on, I mean, keep doing this forever, right? Okay, now let's see how we can use our uh, design. Did we learn some formal way to do this? Yes, right? So all we need to do is that we somehow need the whole state be available to me, all right? So I can design this K tutor 
and uh, place the pole, it will track will convert to zero, okay? So let's do it here. So to implement what we learned before, or what we uh, learned in this class, is that now I have my motor, then my motor, okay? This is U, and somehow I, ass I assume that's my C, this is my Y, I assume that I have the full state available to me. In reality, you don't. What do you do? Observer, okay, I'm not going to do an observer for you only in class, let's do a little bit cheating here, just I assume I have the full state, okay? And then I move this back, this is my reference, this is my Y, this is my tracking control. Tracking control. Uh, the output will be what? U, that's it, okay? And this will be, send it here, and this tracking control is doing what? U equal to KX times X plus KI times times the integral state, Z, right? That we did before, and this K tilde equal to KX and KI. Okay, and I have my A tilde equal to A zero, what? Uh, minus C one, right? And the B tilde is B and zero, things like that. And then you need to place this K tilde. Okay, that's what I did. Let's see how, whether it works. So A tilde is my NP block operation, okay? So DC motor A, zero, C, negative C one, is just this. This A is what? Two by two, so this zero is two by one. C is one by two. The overall is a three by three A tilde matrix. Okay. And my B tilde is vertical stack. Okay, that means I put B and append a zero below B. That's my A tilde, B tilde, and uh, I was checking whether it's controllable or not. Okay, so uh, let's not worry about that for now because we are running out of time. Let's say we are fine. Oh, by the way, this rank is, ro is wrong, okay? This is the rank of arrays, whether second dimension or two dimensional, one dimensional array. So this, I don't think that's right. Ah, why I have this? Okay, then I do this, uh, uh, yeah, I need to import signal and signal, and I did some kind of pole placement. The continuous time pole or angle values is this. It's pretty stable, and uh, it's discrete version. That then I need to place the poles. Uh, let's run it. That's my gain. This is a K tilde. All right, it's not that big, so the system is well controllable. If the system is close to uncontrollable if you gave a, uh, angle values, uh, then the, the K may be really, really big, all right? So now I'm going to implement this tracking control. What does the tracking control do? The tracking controller is also a dynamical system because you need what? You need this guy, right? So if I want to write it out, so that will be for this guy, for this tracking controller, uh, my state is zk plus one, uh, zk plus one equal to zk, what? Plus r minus y, right? And my the output of is u, right? I mean, the notation is, is a little bit uh, confusing. Let's directly look at the code, right? <laughs> and uh, let's see what I did. I still have two inputs, but now 
somehow I, I, I cheat a little bit, I assume I have the plant state X directly, okay? So I put that as a uh, reference, uh, sorry, input. And this state is two-dimensional. Okay, once I have the state, I know why, right? I can know Y is C times state. I suppose I also know C as well. So this is the R, this is the state, and the declare output U. This is not input, this is the output. The output of the tracking control is the, is the control to the, to the plan, which is U. And uh, it's also periodic update. Then I, when I do the uh, state update equation, what I need is what? X next, this X is the Z. Okay, the integral state. X next is the equal to X plus R minus plant Y, but plant Y is C times X. I will, I will upload this code to, 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 the, to the GitHub, you can play with it. And then I set the next state. When the output is what? Is uh, X tutor, it's just, the control U equal to K tutor times X tutor. This X tilde is what? Plant X and also have another, this X is the, the tracking controller X, which is the Z in my, uh, in the derivation node, okay? It's just this formula. All right, that's this. Um, shouldn't have any, and then I have all these uh, block diagrams. Uh, in this case, you can see that I add a, Still, I try to track one tracker, tracking control now, right? I have a K tutor, then I have negative K, right? I mean, so it's A minus BK. So I put a minus sign here, and this is the C matrix I need for cheating. Because C times uh, the motor state gave me my measurement. In reality, I only have measurement. I need to do a observer to find my x, but here I don't want to uh, go through the observer design step, okay? So that's my tracking controller. The output of the tracking controller, let's say the input, the, uh, this is the motor plant, and uh, the tracker get output to the motor plant, and the step input go to the tracker input zero, and the motor plant get output port zero, give me my, uh, the full state sending in, okay? I think, where did I define the motor plant? Oh, uh, here, the motor plant, you can see, A, B, C. That C is identity. It's not the true C. It's identity means I send out all the state directly out from the motor, okay? Then I have, uh, let's see. Matrix gain, why I need a matrix gain? Output builder, matrix gain, DC. Oh, that's what I'm trying to, this is what? This is this term, matrix gain. Because I only want to monitor the motor output, all right? I add a, to the black diagram, a this block, which is just a gain, constant times the input. So that's the motor C, and builder connect from the motor plant, times C, give me the true output. Then logger output is the output get output. Then I start my testing. Beautiful, right? I didn't tune. I tune a little bit, sorry. <laughs> I pick this thing. I mean, we can try different things, right? I mean, as long as uh, if I do this, uh, negative two, negative two, okay, it's less stable now, right? And uh, I don't need to rerun this part, I rerun this. It's very slow now, okay? So somehow I need very aggressive things. Anyway, you have exactly control of what you need now, all right? It's different than trying the error for the KP and the KI thing anymore. Okay, so I hope this one serves two purposes, okay? So our introduction of the tracking control serves the two purposes. First is the exercise of the 
angling battle assignment, the state feedback, pole placement stuff we learned so far. Okay. Second is also a tool for you to design tracking controllers. Okay. So actually you can add noise or disturbance to the system block. You will see that no matter what disturbance you have, it still converts to a, uh, the desired value. Okay. Uh, for example, here, if you want something like 10 times this, that's you mean you know exactly that will have what? A bigger oscillations. Okay, let's see. Uh, make it a little bit more stable. Then, then let's see our, I want to simulate a little bit longer. Five seconds. Oh, no oscillations, why? A little bit? It's too fast. Did I run it? No oscillation that much. Because this is, uh, if you give this thing. Mm, let's try that again. Start to see more oscillation, right? So. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're done with this part. So now we switch to the thing you care more, the midterm, <laughs> okay? 